Okay, guys, we are live! So for those listening at home, welcome to the Dungeon Beansings YouTube channel. My name is Kevin Madison, and I'll be your friendly mother today. Because today we are taking out, for the first time, uh, Free League, a.k.a. Free of the Guns. Uh, very, very cool Alien, uh, the role-playing game. Uh, we are going to be playing through... Uh, an adventure that is was originally published as a separate thing, but is now included as part of the starter set. Uh, that is Andrew uh, Gaska's Chariot of the Gods. Uh, so if you are intending on playing Chariot of the Gods at some point, this session will contain spoilers for that. So uh, proceed with caution. If you don't care about that or you've already had a chance to play through, well then welcome. Let me show you, introduce you to the crew of the uh, Montero. Uh, the Doomed Ship Montero. No, I'm sure you guys will be fine. This game is uh, going to be... You'll be all right. Uh, let me introduce you to the crew here. I'll go the order. I've got you guys on the screen here. Why don't you tell us who you are and who you're playing tonight. First up, we've got Jeff Ray. Hey, everybody. I'm Jeff, and I'm playing Captain Vanessa Miller. And uh, she is a hard worker and a very lovely lady. <laughs> nice. Next up is James. Hi, I'm James, and I'm playing uh, Leah Davis, who's the pilot of the Montero. And she's, uh, you know, a uh, sp speed jockey, adrenaline junkie, just loves the excitement. Nice. And alas, but certainly not least, making his triumphant return to the Dungeon Musings YouTube channel is the oil boss himself, Jason Hobbs. Hey everybody, I am Jason Hobbs and I'm playing John J. Wilson, a corporate liaison uh, from uh, the Wayland yutani headquarters. He's really just a, a friendly guy who happens to be working for the man, but trying to do his best for the rest of the ship and the crew. Definitely. Uh, we also have two other uh, non-player characters who are members of the crew, uh, Lyron Cham and uh, Kayla Rye. Uh, both of them are, they're kind of the uh, the grunts, the uh, roughnecks uh, working on the thing. So they will be NPCs. Um, we Before we before we started uh, the stream, uh, we went through kind of what the rules are, so we're not going to repeat ourselves on that. But I will say this is the first time I've run the game, and I think it's the first time uh, you guys have played the game as well. Uh, so we're, we're a couple of things. We're probably going to fuck up some rules uh, and we're probably going to look up some rules. So uh, as we go through this, just bear with us, uh, whatever errors we make, we're going to endeavor to try and get things right. But uh, uh, and we are going to try and play it by, you know, rules is written for the first time. But um, but that's it. I'm also seeing I've had a little bit of trouble uh, navigating uh, the module. We're playing a module that uh, Rule 20 uh, published. And uh, there's a little bit of user uh, error on my part. So if we do have trouble with the uh, cards and whatnot, we may need to do a little bit of work around, but uh, we'll get to that when we get to it. Uh, in the game, uh, all the players, we are playing through one of the um, pre-made modules, which means we are playing in one of the two modes, the cinematic mode that you can play this game in. In the cinematic mode, there is a pre-written agenda that each character has as they pass through the three acts that make up the story. All of our players have their agendas as well as any secret agendas that may be in place. So I then get to turn to some block text to start us going here. So guys, first, let me welcome you to what has been your home for low these past six months. And that would be the USCSS Montero. I'll get your Roughnecks over here. And I'll just get you guys over here. Captain. John. And Leah. All right. So the block text is, uh, in, is titled, What's the Story, Mother? You are space truckers on the star freighter USCSS Montero running, quote, the gauntlet, end quote. The trade route between Anchor Point Station and the frontier. Your ship's cargo hold is packed with dozens of tanks of dangerous trithium, uh, trithium, tritium, uh, tritium gas that is 
uh, in the process of decaying into extremely profitable helium-3. Uh, well, Hobbs, I lost your camera. Hopefully you're still there. I get it. I'm here. Okay. Um, usually cargoes such as these are towed in massive tanker modules that transport much higher concentrations of the gas uh, at a safe distance from the freight hauler. The Montero isn't rated as a commercial towing vehicle, however, and the small run is a special order for a Wayland yutani corporate account on Sutter's World, a newly established frontier colony. While the trip so far has been fairly routine, the Montero's sensors developed a glitch before he left Anchor Point and sporadically pinged contact with a sensor reflection before you activated the displacement drive and went uh, FTL. Your cargo run so far has been without incident, and now you're just awakening from hyperspace or hypersleep, ready to deliver your goods to the colony of Sutter's world. So, we can picture uh, all of our heroes currently in, where is your, there's the galley, well, you know what, there was, hold up, a guide, oh, let me try and tell you where, well, there's the, yeah, mother computer, I can tell you what some of these things are. The mother computer's right there. Bridge is here, but you wouldn't be sleeping there. Cryo, I believe you guys are right over here. So just like the opening scene of uh, Alien, you can picture the lights all come flashing on. Uh, the uh, running lights appear back elsewhere on the ship. And then each of the kind of, uh, you know, teardrop shaped pods opens up and finds each of you awakening from within. Uh, you are all currently suffering from the dehydrated uh, condition. I can't remember if that's on your character sheets or not. It is. It is, okay, so you can tick that for now. What that just means is that you will not be able to heal uh, until you uh, spend a, um, a cycle uh, getting rehydrated. So as these are, are opening up, uh, what do we see from our uh, our crew as you guys are awakening? Is there any interaction mm -hmm. between those? Each of your character sheets uh, will give you a buddy and a rival, which can give some role-playing cues for how, uh, how you would want to interact with one another. Oh, well, I think that uh, Vanessa is very checklist oriented. And so she is waking up, you know, getting her going through her wake up routine. And then it is like straight to all of her different checklists that she goes through. And probably at the actually probably at the bottom of each one is like a note. Yeah, you know, drink, drink a glass of water. Okay. <laughs> So you get, are you, are you heading right to the galley to get uh, your glass of water? Yeah, probably. Okay. Like maybe that's where she's, you know, going to sort of okay. take a moment to. Uh, Cham and Rai are taking their sweet time getting up. They are buddies with one another. Okay. I'm used to that probably. I think Wilson's trying to push himself to uh, get past um, previous miss. Uh, communications with uh, Miller and knows that she always gets a glass of water and so like bumps into her as he's kind of tries to move in there. Oh, oh sorry, Captain. I was, I was only attempting to help. And no problem. Be sure to hydrate. Davis, uh, you can kind of pick up that there, whatever these pleasantries are, uh, like each of the at the very least, Wilson seems to be getting on uh, Miller's last nerve at every opportunity. <laughs> it's been six months he's been with this corporate guy, but it's not clear if he's intending on doing that or it's just his personality does not jive with hers. What's up? Yeah, Miller. Gonna go check the, gonna go check the flight deck. Uh, get up and uh, stretch and a jump. Do a few uh, jumps up and down, wave my arms, okay. and then off to the bridge. 
So Miller, um, you, guys, you can see that uh, Davis is trying to go from the galley without hydrating. Oh. Uh, maybe we have like a, yeah. I, I think I would just say, you know, hey, take a water with you. And toss like a, I don't know, a bottle of water or whatever we got. I think it's over. from what I recall. Me, mom, eh? So as you're coming back, what you notice, uh, Miller, is that there does appear to be a, there. there's a message from mother. Mother is the computer, incidentally. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> For those who haven't seen uh, <laughs> Aliens in a while, like... Mother is the name of the computer. <laughs> what do you do, Captain? Um, I guess, um... It's likely, you know, I would go, is there a spot that's more private to go check the message from the yeah, computer? You, you'd go right into Mother's, uh, you remember in um, Alien, uh, they go into that big white room with all the stuff in there? Yeah. Don Dallas would go in there first. It's a separate entrance here and then you head down. Yeah, absolutely. So I would go there somewhere okay. a little more private just in case, you know, yeah. it's something important that, you know, I want to be able to share with the crew and not have them just over here or okay. see it. So I'm just going to slim down some of your uh, tokens here so we can have everyone wherever they are. Where are you, Wilson? Are you in the uh, galley getting your food? Yeah. Headed to the galley to hydrate. You as, got it. <laughs> as a uh, I'm told, I guess. Commanded. Okay. <laughs> so there's Wilson and Davis. We'll get your name trimmed down here as well. And there you go. So you grab your water. You Maybe you and uh, Miller uh, would pass, you know, from the galley. And you were heading up to the bridge, you said. Yep. Yeah, and I think no probably... Pilot seat. Okay. Probably on my way to the uh, computer room, uh, you know, there'd be some kind of comm unit or something. I would jump on that and uh, tell the other two, get to the galley, hydrate. You know, I know they're slackers, so yep. I'm on top of them. Okay. Uh, so the two of them finally uh, uh, make their way down and uh, we'll start with them. So Wilson, you're sitting down and the two of them uh, come in and Ryan Sham have been referring to you as sir the entire time, and it doesn't matter how many times in the last six months you've been trying to get them to, if you would, get them to call by uh, by anything other than Mr. Wilson, um, then, you know, uh, they're just choosing to ignore that. So they walk in and, you know, they're, they've been bullshitting as they've been walking down the corridor and they're like, oh, Mr. Wilson, this is where you're going to be disengaging with us or are you uh have you finish your your review and then rye um, says top marks for all of us i guess right bonuses in order nothing but the best so far fellas good work all around of course no need to call me that john works or justin or whatever the hell my, john my name is so cham <laughs> looks to rye he says you see that this is what gets you to the c-suite he's not telling us anything he could sit there and whether he's lying through his teeth or he's telling the truth, not a single sign coming from him. Right you are, Mr. Wilson. And they head over and uh, Cham hits uh, Ryan and says, come on, get your water. We, uh, Miller's captain's going to give you shit if you don't uh, hydrate up. And they make a point of sitting away from where you're sitting, uh, Mr. Wilson. So I think the camera shows uh wilson getting his water or doing his stuff and there's like a reflection in the cabinet or something in front of him and they can see him murmuring to himself well that's because there's nothing to know boys you know just yeah. kind of <laughs> his eyes like he's trying to do everything he tries to do is what he tries to do yeah yeah <laughs> so um davis one of the standard procedures for approaching a frontier world like this is uh they would have a uh a beacon tower uh so Standard thing, you're getting things up and you're going to get the, the Beacon Tower message out and, and going. Um, what's strange is when you ping, there's no response. 
So it could be that something's broken um, or something else, but you're gonna have to give us a, a comm tech roll to get a sense of what the hell might be going on here. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, two successes already. I'm gonna guess you don't wanna push that because all you need is one. Mm. I'll run with the one then. Okay. <laughs> two successes, yeah. Nice. So here's what you know. Um, what the fuck? So there is absolutely no sign of Sutter's world. Like, no world at all. The star charts are way the fuck off from where you should be. Uh, you're certainly not at Shutter's world right now. And in fact, you are in the middle of deep space. There's nothing around you. Now, Miller, you've gone into Mother's and you picture the big white, um, you know, the white room, there's that chattering of like 80s sci-fi tech around you. And there's a message that's come through from, from Mother. If you check it. Yeah. What she reports is that there have, you know that um, sensor ping that's been fucking up since you left um, Anchor Point Station? Yeah. So Mother reports that there was an approaching ship. In your mind, what you're thinking is a colonial picket ship that's protecting protecting Sutter's world. That would make sense. There is, you know, um, there are rival space kind of nations in the war in the setting. That's there's a reason why, why you have colonial marines uh, is in part to protect, you know, the frontier, um, the yeah from from uh, rival nations or from raiders or whatever. Um, you're going to probably want to uh, get uh, Davis or someone else who's got a decent comm tech. I, I just noticed you've only got three dice or two dice, three dice you rolled there. Davis, what is your comm tech? Zero. <laughs> um, does have, I'm just looking at your character sheets here. Uh, Wilson's got a one and his uh, wits is a three. Uh, Oh, you know what, Rye? Rye's got Wits 4 and Comtech 3. So you might want to get oh, Rye yeah. to, to take a look at that. Okay. So, I mean, that's probably nope. what I'd do. I'd head out of the... Uh, that's all that Mother had to say, is that it's a ship. That's it, yeah. yeah. So, um, I'll head back... Uh, I'll head back through the... Uh, well, I have to go this way. Yeah, yeah, you have to go through the bridge yeah. in order to get there. So, Davis, you'll hear the door open up as Miller comes out, and you don't need to make a roll for it, but you can see there's a look of concern or confusion on her face. Yeah, well, she passes up, like, what the fuck, Miller? We're in, the, we're in the middle of nowhere. What do you mean we're in the middle of nowhere? We're in deep space. We're nowhere near this Sutter's world. <laughs> Well, how the hell did that happen? So Miller, if you walk over, Davis has got the, the you know, the navigation grid up and it's exactly like she said. Wilson, um, you can probably hear this kind of coming down the corridor because there's a little bit of raise, like what the hell's going on? Cham and Rye are bullshitting back and forth, so they're not really paying attention, but you can definitely hear that from uh, coming from the bridge. Something, you're not at Sutter's world? So uh, that's obviously disconcerting news. So I think Wilson will kind of move that way, carrying his carrying his drink. Okay. Is there something wrong, Captain? Uh, yes, actually, maybe several things. Firstly, we are not where we're supposed to be. Wilson glances around suspiciously. Not really oh, suspicious, uh, but just like, what, what the heck? That seems crazy. And sorry, Kev, which Rye is the one that is the comms expert? Rye is the one who's the comms expert, yeah. I probably like, uh, <clears throat> in a slightly panicked voice, would be, uh, again, like on the ship intercom, like, Rye, to the bridge now. So she comes uh, walking in, 
adjusting her hat. Yeah, Captain. Is there a problem? There's uh, several problems. But the first problem is there is a ship nearby. What? Mother informed me. It's probably a, a picket ship, isn't it? And there's something, they got something protecting Sutter's world, don't they? We ain't at Sutter's world. We're in the middle that, of nowhere. That's the second problem. We mean we're at We've second. Dropped out. We've dropped out in deep space. What? You... Davis, I told you to start fucking around with the com... <laughs> Hold on. You've just broken it or something. There's something... Let me take a look. Oh, working fine for me. Well, you know, you may be thinking you're making it work fine, but like I said, uh, you got to make sure you're letting someone who knows how to work these things work these things. Just give me a sec here. All right. Two successes. Uh, so, Con I think Wilson nervously interrupts. Is well, should we find something out about this ship? I mean, are we in danger? What we're we working on? Just <laughs> Mr. Calm Wilson. Down, there's John. no ship here. Don't. I'm sure that Davis just fucking. Oh. Well, see, that's the problem here. There's, It's got to be a glitch. And... Huh. Well... What happened to the... There's no the ship. House. Hmm? What happened to the... There's no house. ship, but... Marina doesn't look like she can even use her one leg right now. Oh, one second here. I was going to mute Hobbs. I was going to mute you in... Nicole, there we go. Um, well, that's weird. There's not. Uh, there's no ship out there. It's just a problem with the glitch in the sensors. But there's no world out there. Why is there no world out there? I don't know. We seem to have been brought out of uh, stasis early. I think we better check the logs. Okay. So if you'll head back into... Um, uh, yeah, it would be heading back into Mother uh, once again yeah. uh, to check in there, Miller, okay? So you grab your water and you head back in there. What is... Uh, Rye, uh, uh, I guess, is going to try and run scans on the sensor. What, what do you want her and Cham doing during this time, and the rest for that matter. Uh, I think I would tell someone, uh, I don't know who would be the appropriate person to uh, check on our cargo, because, you know, as you sort of said, it's not really something we're supposed to be hauling like this. And if something's gone wrong with our sleep stasis, uh, you know, maybe we've gone farther than we should, or, you know, yeah. oh, I just want to make sure, you know, we're not carrying some kind of dangerous cargo all of a sudden. Sure, Cham can take care of that. Yeah, Cham, check the cargo. Make sure everything's still you got okay. It. You got it, Miller. And uh, he heads on over. He like he's giving gives uh, Wilson shit, but he he perfectly lessens to you, likes you. Rye, it's a bit of a trouble. What about Davis? What do you want Davis doing? I should be in the pilot seat, uh, just running checklists and getting uh, making sure everything's. Just so, so. Okay. Look, in the middle of green screens and clattering noises. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Get through that checklist quickly. Okay. So, Miller, uh, you are in. Oh, and Hobbs, I got you muted in uh, the Zoom call. So, yeah, you just got to unmute yourself there. Um, while you're in there, you're going to get some uh, secret information here. Mm -hmm. So let me send you what Mother shows you. You can picture all the lights are flashing and a little like kind of message shows up on the screen. And so this I'm happens sure after secret, about... That's not going to be bad. <laughs> this happens after about uh, maybe uh, an hour of you trying to, you know, like check everything, double check everything, run things. You get a message from mother that says that you will, it, that they want to, um, that she, the mother wants to speak to you. 
in that time, Cham does a full check on the um, on the cargo. Doesn't seem like there's no errors there. You know, it's still degrading into the um, whatever it's called, the uh, helium, helium three. Yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. Not, no worries. Uh, Hobbs. Um, so what? Uh, Wilson, what's, uh, the captain has kind of delegated work to Rai, to Cham, and to um, uh, to Davis to get things doing. What are you thinking of you're doing while everyone is? Uh... Uh, I'm sorry to make you repeat anything, but what seems like the most likely to maybe find out what the heck is going on? It seems like everyone else is actually doing it. The people who have roles on the ship, Rai is working on the comms uh, and, the, and the sensors to try and figure out if there's you know, what's happened here. Davis is keeping the ship under control. Cham is checking the cargo. Uh, Miller hasn't really delegated anything to you, but if there's something that she's gone in to deal with mother. I think I'll help Rye see if there's a way that I can, hey, is there something I can do here to sure. affect this? Yeah, uh, she just gives you nothing but sass uh, back as well. <laughs> no, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Wilson, I, I've got my job under control. When you're completing, the performance reviews for corporate, I've got all this under control. And it wasn't my fault that there were glitches in the sensors. We tried to take care of that at Anchor, Anchor Point. Oh, I know, I know, Rye. Don't worry, you're top on my list without a question. I just wanna see if there's anything I can do. Like, can I check something, like check to see, there is no ship you're saying? Are we doing some uh, diagnostics? What's going on? And Rai just sort of busies herself with uh, work. Davis, do you have anything to say to Wilson as he's trying to fumble his way around as uh, on the bridge? <laughs> Davis does not have anything to say. <laughs> just looking, uh, ah, she's too, she's too uh, busy with her uh, beloved piloting than uh, listening to some corporate waste of space. Uh, making noise. Okay. So I'm going to send um, Vanessa some of the messages from Mother here. Mm. The secrets begin. If I mean, obvious, nothing to worry about. <laughs> if, if it's obvious <laughs> no one wants to come around, he'll go and see what Cham is up to and see if uh, he's heard anything or knows what's going on. I love that Wilson's just floating around the ship trying to get someone to either let him help or talk to him. <laughs> I mean, does um, Wilson have a specific task usually on the ship or no, not really? That's the thing. He's not kind really of like redundant. He, that's just it is that he's kind of because he's the corporate ride along. Mm -hmm. You're there to like a review everyone's performance and make a decision on promotions or, you know, refitting the ship or whether it's retired or what, whatever is going to be. It's part, probably a good chunk of Rai's resentment towards you is knowing that like their future for the corporation is going to be Rest based on. on yeah. yeah. No one likes right. to have their manager, you know, riding along with them. No. <laughs> <laughs> so here's what you can do, Miller, to kind of capture the feel of the. Uh, of the film, you can speak out loud to mother. You don't need to type stuff in. Ah. Oh, and it'll like answer back basically? Yep. Okay. What kind of a distress call? Distress call? I don't like the sound of distress. Do we actually hear that? Hear him through the? No, this is door? it. Yeah, yeah, he's in a. She is in a separate uh, thing. That's what I thought through this. Why, why is this our business? In the movie, did it type out when the the captains and stuff <laughs> talked to them? Yeah. Okay, I thought so. Yeah, all right, I remember that now. Yeah. Mm.
See, we can't do anything with there. Maybe Wilson will be. Do you want me to be in uh, adding something in between here or no? If I you'd like, be yeah, to go, Davis. go right ahead while I'm typing. Sure, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so I think Wilson will come back because Cham already shoot him off. And uh, he's still dehydrated, so he's definitely got <laughs> some water and brings an extra uh, bottle or, you know, cylinder or whatever it is they use, hands it to Davis and is like, um, so what is a normal pilot's task in this situation? They we're out in the middle of nowhere. What, anything else wrong with the ship or, or like what's going on? I'm just waiting for something to do. Since we don't know where to go, I can't fly us to nowhere. I need me a target. She says, oh, fuck, and walks out to the We are not equipped for this. And then she'll kind of walk out of the... <laughs> That's all she'll leave Mother with. Sure. Uh, so as you walk back onto the bridge, why don't you describe for everyone what uh, what do they see as Miller comes out, you know? I think she just looks, like, pissed off. Just like, you know... Um, she's probably normally like you know she's got the ship under control and everybody's got their job and you know there's a lot of uh lists to follow and procedure and not but she's not usually like too upset or mean about it but she seems quite pissed off at this point like uncharacteristically upset well she'll call uh, she'll call cham back to the uh, the, the bridge or the galley? Uh, the or... Yeah, sorry, the bridge. bridge yeah, well, actually, let's go meet in the galley. That's a good place to talk. Okay. Everyone to the galley. Okay. We need to have a quick meeting, and I want everyone to hydrate. Okay. So you all sit around, grab your little... It's very much like the... Uh, you know, the opening uh, first scene with all the crew in Alien. You're all sitting around a white table, eating out of like Tupperware containers. The 80s sci-fi, you know, class, or 70s sci-fi classics. So like, I'm imagining that like, we have some kind of routine of like, you know, drink a bottle of water every hour for the first six hours after you're out or something. Yeah. And she probably puts two bottles of water in front of everyone. And well, there, I think says, there's that you actually had to give to get it from a like, thing. Or yeah, like there cans was, or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah they were like, pouring into like Tupperware glasses in the, in the yeah, film, so. Yeah, so she's like put like two cups in front of everyone as she starts to talk. And she's like, I want everyone done these by the time this conversation is over. We're being retasked. There is a distress call from an unknown vessel. Mother informs me if any of us want to receive our shares we must investigate whoa 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 what do you mean as the rye what do you mean investigate we didn't sign up for this i know none of you signed up for this and i am not happy about this either as we are not equipped for well, then hold on let's search I, and rescue i think we need to pull up the contract then because i don't think my contract requires me to do this i don't care what your contract says i know what mine says and i want my shares we need to right. triangulate back the position the, the location we need to find its source and we need to investigate He can do it as extra credit, Rye. Bonus points on any performance review. <clears throat> she just stares daggers at you. Helpless idiot doesn't know for sure. Sorry, that's all <clears throat> I can say. Look, I know nobody's happy about this. Least of all me. Let's just get there, find out what's going on, figure out where we are, get back on course, and be done with this. The faster we get through it, the faster we get on with it. Cham says, right. right. Faster we get it done, faster we get on with it. How's the cargo? Safe? Cargo's as we left it. Safe and stable. Uh, we'll be able to make, take care of this. We can get back into our, uh, uh, get back into 
FTL sleep and then do I have like employee files or do I just know their like skills yeah. or? Yeah, you would know the, uh, so for the Roughnecks, for the two that aren't, I'll let uh, uh, Hobbs and, and James tell you what Davis and uh, Wilson are good at, but um, Cham in particular is excellent at uh, heavy machinery. Yeah. And he's pretty good in a scrap too. He's a big lad, as right. they say. And then uh, Rye is uh, decent at medical aid um and very good at comtech right okay yeah so definitely like um i'm almost imagining yeah so she would have like specific names for the roles so I, I don't i won't make them up right now but like probably like corporate <laughs> assigned roles you know like yeah hey you're you know Med, you know, medical officer, you're this, whatever. Like, I'm retasking them with like actual different roles in the, you know, that match search and rescue protocol that probably the company has. Maybe I even have like a little binder I've pulled out or something, you know, that I'm going through the checklist of like, you know, okay, so right, you're in charge of comms then. and medical. What's that? I get a better pay grade then. Search and rescue <laughs> pr premium job. <laughs> You'll get what you're owed. We can you negotiate for more when we get when we get back to Earth. You all get exactly what you deserve. I'm sure John will write a very flowing review of everyone's performance today. Aye, aye, Captain. So, Cham, uh, you, you guys have on board one of the uh, cargo <laughs> lifters, like the you know the cargo lifter from Aliens. You yeah. got something like that. That's for moving the, the cargo around. Cham is your guy to operate that. Rye will be your com your computer's person. Uh, yeah. Davis is your pilot. And what about um, Davis and Wilson? You guys want to tell us what uh, your particular skills are? And be remember that each of you has a talent as well. Once you do something that nobody else can do. Where would the talent be? Uh, talent would be on the top right, I believe, on these character right. sheets. Blank on my character sheet, but maybe it's on my the one you sent me. Let's see here. Uh, oh, why isn't yours listed on here? Hold up. I can, uh, I think I can drag it, drop it in for you. Hold on here. Other than that, I think a, a little bit of com tech, which is just like a catch-all for mechanic, right? Yeah. Uh, but mostly probably better with the uh, medical, mostly through empathy as opposed to l learned knowledge. Okay. So not very much, honestly. <laughs> right. But he's eager. That's right. He's yeah. So, helpful. yeah. I think that uh, what she says is, John, I'm going to need you to stay close by me. You sure we don't need any help securing that cargo? It seems pretty dangerous. I'm a little nervous about it, Captain. Cham says it's fine. It's fine. Let's not worry about that. Let's get this job done. Oh. Uh, your personal safety is listed. Right. Oh, okay. I've, I read this somewhere. Yeah. I read that somewhere, but I don't. Oh, it's on. It is on the character sheet you gave me on PDF. Yeah, and I think so. I don't know why it's listed under your. It's not. It's listed on on the character sheet there, but I don't know why it's not uh, showing up. It's weird. Um, it's showing up now. It's showing up now. Okay, good. Well, yeah. I just I cut and pasted it in there. What about yours? Let me double check. Make sure Miller and. Because I did check it before. There's two character sheets. I think they I kind of know what mine is. I. If it's oh, not fuck. on there. Yeah, it isn't on there. I don't know. That's weird. Uh, they have, so there's two character sheets they have for the game, and it's weird because there's like the official one that you're supposed to use for uh, Free League, and then there's one that's like made by um, like some fan or, or something, and that's the one that seems to be, the fan one seems to be the one that works for um, Destroyer of Worlds, not for this one. I may have fucked up and, and selected the wrong sheet here. This will still work, and it's got all your stats down right. It just means I need to give you your things. Fortunately, we do have in the appendix, we've got everything loaded in here, so I can just cut and paste. Seems a nice uh, character sheet. They seem very nice, especially if it does roll properly and all that for you. Oh, yeah. Without having to know. 
And you can get, um, for one of the two sheets, uh, there's a uh, interface with the compendium. So there you go, Miller, yours is on there now. So you can you you can drag and drop stuff from it, just like you can in uh, oh, okay. like D&D or Pathfinder or Savage Worlds. And Davis, do you have yours in there? Let's see. No, it's not either. That's really weird. I could have sworn I found them, but I mean, it has been a long ass week, so it could very well be. A, I saw them in the other adventure that uh, I got, Destroyer of Worlds, and not in this one. So here we go. But no harm, no foul. Here we go. There you go, Davis. Um, yeah, Davis is here. Piloting is uh, her real specialty. And then what about you, Captain? What do you, what's your sort of uh, expertise? Uh, uh, so let's see. Oh. Empathy and command. Command, okay. Uh, I have good strength, but I don't actually have any good skills with it. Um, okay. And I also have... I'm like kind of the backup pilot, I think. Okay. Uh, and I guess my observation's okay as well. I'm, I can... Uh, I'm observant, I'm empathetic, and uh, backup pilot. So here's something you can do with command. Command works with empathy. Uh, you can make a role uh, to stop someone else from panicking to get them oh, back under control. Cool. Uh, you can also give orders as a slow action. You can bark orders at another character. Uh, they, must be able to, they must be able to hear you. And for every uh, success that you roll, you, uh, they get a plus one modification to their roll when carrying out your order. Oh, nice. And plus one is one extra success or an extra One extra dice? skill. Skill dice. Skill dice. Yeah, when you, each of them should prompt for a modifier for you to add things on. Um to think if there's anything else that isn't like obvious what uh what it's used for i think i'm um, ex-colonial marines i think i was an ex-colonial marines drop pilot given by skills uh, it, i mean you could just That's be a pilot my imagination pilot, you have uh i've got ranged combat as well oh then quite possibly you're right. well, i don't have a gun so there's pure uh backstory yeah you're only and you're only 27 <laughs> as well well, one neat thing about the the uh, Colonial Marine source book is they fill in a lot of the stuff in, uh, about them, and like there are kids who are basically like they're not orphans per se, but they're like in vitro kids who are grown specifically to become Marines. So their whole family is the core. You know, um, what's his name? The sergeant's speech about uh, you know, yeah. yeah, it's really because the core is for some of those people they were born into it. So, um, yeah. Anyway, uh... Would we have any weapons aboard the ship, Kevin? That's a good question. Uh, you have, uh, things that are actual weapons, and then you have stuff that can be kind of repurposed for it. Uh, there are, um, light f sidearms. Let me see if I can find... Uh, okay, this NPC cards. Here we go. Sonar item cards. Now, this is the one thing I couldn't figure out. cards yeah I, I just don't know how to find the specific Ooh, it's the one i was looking for <laughs> apparently i seem to think about it guys so this is nice. the um m4a3 service pistol that uh, you guys have let's see here i think there is let's see how many are on board nice to see yeah uh... One. 1911 is still going strong. One pistol. There's Ooh. one pistol on board, and uh, it has one reload. Well, that makes me... That makes it a really tough choice. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a list of everything that's on there, but right now, it's not stuff you necessarily need to uh, be concerned with. Um, now, what... Um, what? Uh, once you guys have finished up your meals, uh, I think that... There will be enough time passing. Uh, a shift will pass, so you'll all be able to get rid of your dehydrated condition. So you okay. can turn that off. Uh, you will be able to heal. Position yourselves where you think you would be uh, after, say, an hour and a half of, of work. And we'll make a roll for uh, Rye once again with ComTech. And then what? Oh, my goodness. Roll 20. Come on. 
to just not wanting to move What's the this room fucking for? character sheet. Cheapers. This is so... I, it drives me nuts. This has been an ongoing problem for years with Roll20 now, but like the whole sticky character sheet thing. Oh, yeah, when you... Oh, uh, totally. So annoying. It's so fucking annoying. Because it's when also... you pop it out and all that. Yeah, yeah, like it's... I've got it popped... Well, I can't pop it onto a separate screen and actually see it. And there we go. Finally, fucking drag, drag it down. It just it would move off of our cameras. Uh, but anyway, the um, I ha, or ha, um, Wilson, you said that you were going to be assisting. I could yeah, whatever Miller said, said to stay close to. Yeah, I think she'll be on the bridge because that's sort of where the anything could you know happen here. If, okay. if he can help Rye, he certainly would. That's something he's interested in doing. Okay. So Miller told Wilson to stay close to whoever's far away from Miller. I mean, he was sort of, well, what she was thinking, Vanessa was thinking is just that, like, the crew gets irritated by him, even though, he, I mean, <laughs> she doesn't think they should, but, and, you know, she's had a few private conversations with them, but the ribbing has not stopped. And so she's just thinking to keep him close to like try and keep their stress level. Like he stresses them out a little bit, right? Like he, his presence sort of just puts them on edge. Like Kevin said, you know, nobody likes their boss watching over them. And so yeah, that's sort of why she said to stay close to me was just to keep him away from the other crew. <laughs> But I mean, if he, that's up to him whether how much he's following that because she's not really his boss. So he doesn't have to, you know, follow that to the letter of the law or anything. So, okay. That's up to you, Hobbs. So, Wilson, you staying off the bridge then? Um, I think so. Oh, what are these other rooms for? I think. He's going to maybe one of his thoughts could be that he can send a, a, an encoded message or some. I don't know how long it would take or something like that. And I also was curious, like, I think I can use this access card, but is it once per scene? How often can I use the access card, your signature item? Oh, uh, the once access card act. is only used to uh, reduce your stress. It's it's yeah, a role. once per act. Yeah, okay. yeah. And right now you guys have no, um, you're, you, you haven't got any stress yet. I think he's gonna try and like what little bit they know about where they are, try and see if maybe he can surprise everybody by knowing like where they are and some information about the area. So like mm. wherever the main computers are or something, he's gonna go there and say, he's gonna try and look that up and try and gain information about the area. Okay. Nice. So to gain information in the area would be ComTech and it sounds like they, um, that's what uh, the, what he called, what they've already done. Okay. Between Leah and um, and Rye, or uh, Davis and Rye, I'm just giving a message here. Mm. By actually, I mean like knowing it, not just having it so it's on somewhere, but having it in his head. So for you know, just read a report on it or something like that. Okay. I think you or might be able to pull rank. Uh, if you wanted to see the message that uh, Miller got. Okay. Right, because you're um, you're actually... Uh... Well, I don't want I don't want to get Miller pissed at this point. It doesn't seem like it would be worth it, especially okay. as everyone's a little bit getting on edge. I'm okay. more like, you know, just going there and trying to... It seems like, is there be like, just like a research library that you might be able to see if there's more information than they initially got or something like that? Okay. Uh... It's mother is what you would get all that through. And I'd have to go into the mother room, right, to do yeah. that. Now, are we allowed to? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you are yeah, at I least. Think, I think that's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say, Miller, I'm going to see if I can get anything uh, from mother about what's yeah, going on good, in this area. Good. Or something. Okay. Because she just wants you away from the other crew and they're not allowed in there right now. So that's perfect. So, <laughs> Davis, you and Rye are going to work on... Um, uh, uh, going to work on this on the sensors, trying to, to triangulate where this distress call is coming. And sure enough, there is a distress call. All right. Yeah, Miller, mother's right. 
There's something out there. There's another ship. That breaks the monotony a bit. You get anything you off of it? Freight run. Mother said it was too garbled to tell us anything. Yeah, do we get more than that? She's not wrong about that. <laughs> Um, it's you. You can try. You can track towards it now, um, but um, yeah, there's not. Um, uh, there isn't anything to tell you what kind of ship this is. Hmm. It could be like the. I think it's the C CSS is the rival nation. Let me double check here. The two big because there's two. Well, a couple different things. CSS. The UPP, the Union of Progressive Peoples. So, uh, 80s sci-fi socialists. It could even be one of their ships. We don't know. Well, and the trouble with that is that they, uh, the United Americas and the uh, Union of Progressive Peoples, um, they are kind of in a, uh, they're in a very um, hot, cold war on the frontier right now. Hmm. It sort of thought that things uh, might get pretty dicey uh, pretty quick. There's also the Triple, I think it's called the Triple Nation Alliance. And that's where Whaling Newtani, because it's a British uh, organization. Um, but Whaling Newtani is such a big corporation that it, it works in um, the um, American space as well, United America's space. Okay. I think that at some point during this time period, uh, Captain Miller is going to go and retrieve the firearm from wherever it is in its locked cabinet or okay. wherever, uh, and just have it on her person, probably like somewhere that's both safe, you know, sort of secure, but also hidden to not sort of alarm the um, crew. Sure. Uh, Wilson, is there anything in particular you're looking for? Uh, when you're looking, like uh, checking in with Mother, um, you will be able to confirm the everything that Miller told you is indeed the instructions that you've uh, that have come from headquarters, and it's part of the contract. She's not wrong. The contract, and you would probably be aware of this anyway, is that the crew has to investigate these kinds of things. And um, if they failed to do so, they forfeit any profit from the uh, trip. Anything else you'd want um, to investigate? Yeah, like, um, like I was thinking if there's any, uh, you said it was from, what's, we have the TNA, the UA, and what's the other one called, the UPP? Uh, there is, yeah, like the, the major, Things. There's the independent core system colonies. Uh, there's the Union of Progressive Peoples, the United Americas, and the Three World Empire. The Three World Empire is the one that includes the British. British and the Japanese. Yeah. Bizarre. Okay. Is uh, check to see if like the sector that we're in comes up on uh, like who usually calls it their mm. area or something like that. Maybe. Mm. So maybe that will help. Yeah, good question. So, or if it's like finish. a trade route or something like that, maybe. Yeah, no, that's a good. That's a good question because actually, it does come with uh, the starter set comes with a big map uh, for the region, and I believe you're in the American space here. Let's see here. Well, you're going to the frontier for sure to Sutter's world. The heck is that? Hmm. I have no earthly idea. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, 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 I'm looking for Anchor Point Station and Sutter's World. Either of those would be. Like, it's, it's not like the map isn't like um, you know like Battletech's map where it's just you're you're never gonna find something you're looking for unless you got the coordinates. There is a good chance we could find what this is here. Yamano Station. Hmm. 
I'll have to look in the break and see if I can find it. Uh, yeah, I don't see it easily here. I'm in the right space, aren't I? Yeah, I am. Okay, the American armed. Hmm. Having a look to... Where is it? Excuse me. Oh, here it is. It's over um, to the uh, west. The west, okay. So, right, slap bang <laughs> in the middle of the west. The so, furthest west. Furthest west. So, middle of the. Timburo's If you go from the center. Oh, uh, Sutter's World. There it west, is. Yeah, yeah, I see, see it. it there. Yeah, so it's like. If this is. You know, that's sort oh, of goodness. space right there. It's way that where you're headed is Sutter's World. Which is way the fuck over here. Holy shit. It is frontier space. Uh, and I don't see where Anchor Point Station is. But it's way in the middle of nowhere. Like, you're nowhere near CPP space. You're nowhere near the um, Three World Empire space, independent core system space. Like, it shouldn't be. It's unusual that anyone is out here. Uh, yeah. I can see Anchor Point as well. But oh, where is it? Anchor Point is if you're at Sutter's World and head southeast. Um, okay. It'll oh, there be it the is. first yeah, place yeah, right you edge. see southeast. So you guys went from the edge here. There actually is a map on the thing here. I don't know why I'm doing this. <laughs> this way. There is a much easier way to show you. <laughs> where you are <laughs> you got the map on this on the road I, I do yeah yeah i got it right oh, there. nice there you go. nice oh yeah this makes it easier there we go so here's where you guys are you guys uh were leaving from anchor point station which is right down here mm. it's right down there and you're heading to sutter's world which is over here mm. you have come out somewhere in the black between here, and you're nowhere near mm. um, five five uh, Cankery um, or uh, Shambolo. So you're nice. in the black, somewhere between these two worlds. So ha um, Wilson, you are on the. You're in uh, Mother's room. Uh, what is what do you want Cham doing during this? Um just like general maintenance stuff? Yeah, like probably, you know, ch just checking the ship over, like making sure, you know, we're not going to have any engine problems, we're not going to have any like if we're, you know. Yeah. Okay. Um Well, now we finally get some excitement, huh? Yes. Better than just hauling shit. We get to be the rescue heroes. Mm -hmm. We may get to be the heroes. You're right. <sighs> let's hope it's something simple, though. Hell no, let's hope it's something... Needs some tricky flying, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> of course you'd think that, Davis. So you guys are talking on the bridge. You can picture that there is just blackness utter blackness in front of you um you just can't you know there doesn't seem to be anything you're moving towards you're you get the throbbing of the engines you know that that chugging that's that carries through the uh, the metal of the hull that seems to be the only thing i suggesting that you guys are actually in motion until suddenly everything goes to hell Red lights, sirens are coming on at every point on this. There is a collision sensor that is just screeching. The klaxons you hear going off on the bridge would probably be better equipped somewhere outside on a deck. Um, uh, Leah or Davis, you are staring outside and trying to figure out why the fuck these these things are going off like what is causing the sound and it's only like nearing the last second when you realize that there's a patch of black 
directly ahead of you that's getting larger very, very quickly where you just cannot see the stars beyond. Okay, so I'll veer off from that. Okay. Would you give us a piloting check at, uh, I think everybody can add one to their stress level. Mm, okay. And uh, then, Davis, yeah. would you give us a piloting check at minus two? That is two successes already. I'm gonna push that and go for more. Uh, eight. Yeah, okay, why not? Okay, <laughs> so you're, oh, actually, hold on. When you're pushing things, don't be too trigger happy because your, stre your stress goes up first, then you roll. Oh. So you're always pushing, you'll always get one extra stress dice. Oh, right, okay. Okay. Well, that's a. Oh well, I did it anyway. So. <laughs> well, no, no, but so the thing is, stress no, no, because stress dice could come up with panic. Mm hmm So you have to go. So you, you have, have to, to add one stress and then re-roll. All right. Um. So raise well, your stress level to anyway. two. Yeah, it doesn't let me re-roll. That's okay. Raise your stress level to two, and yep. then uh, hit uh, pouting once again at minus two. So. Okay, but you would have had. Uh, I'm gonna double check, but I'm, I'm fairly certain you that when you push, you can choose not to re-roll everything. You keep the two successes. Is yeah, what you're you saying. keep the two successes, or, or yeah, the two successes oh, in the first roll. Would I not right. effectively get what I just did, which is I got three this time? You got because I had two, then I re-rolled and got a third. Well, no, but, but your, yeah, your reroll was wrong, dice. though, because you were supposed to roll two stress dice with it. Okay. Whenever you push a dice, you have to raise your, your stress level first, because if you roll a one on a stress dice, you, you panic. All right. Well, then that no, might be I why guess. it's not holding. The, it wouldn't be able to hold the other two successes, though, because he rerolled. Well, I'm just, oh, just so double-checking But then your... you wouldn't ever really want to re-roll, then. Yeah, all of the... Because if you've already got two... So I don't know, so the, the sheet is, is just not working properly. Like, when mm -hmm. you... Because uh, when you push your roll, uh, you grab the ones that do not show a success, and then you uh, roll them again. That's that's what I'm saying, since he redid the piloting roll. Yeah. Instead of just hitting the push button, that's why it doesn't remember the yeah, previous they, Oh, roll. you're right. Yes, that's why. Yeah, one, two, why. three. So four, the sheet's five, working. Six. It's just because when it, when I re-rolled it, when I hit re-roll, it kept the two. You know, I got mm -hmm. three. I, I doubt I ran. I rolled three, three sixes. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. So I got a six with the four dice. I should have rolled. Yeah, but five you also dice. would needed to increase your stress level before. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Before you yeah, rolled. Should have so, given me an extra dice. Exactly. Right. Should have automatically done that, but. You know, it's, it looks like it's doing a lot. Um, well, uh, okay, well, in any event, um, what you uh, see, uh, Davis, is you are able to just barely navigate this thing around. Whoa. There's something completely pitch black that's hanging out there. And... Obviously, you guys don't travel with your floods on all the time because if you're going to come across something dead in space, the likelihood of coming across it when it has no lights on, especially if there's transmitting a, uh, a signal, um, it should show up. And yet, this thing's transmitting but has no fucking lights on. Everyone gets a chance to kind of catch your breath. Um, Davis, uh, well, Rye is probably swearing quite a bit. How are you going, Davis? I mean, you do kind of enjoy that uh, adrenaline. <laughs> no, exactly. So I'll be, uh, I'll be full of adrenaline, feeling good. Yeah. A bit of excitement. Someone turn those fucking sirens off. Davis, you can easily do that. <laughs> Wilson, you have no idea what's happened here. Yeah, I think she. He just stumbles in from the mother. You hear the door open. Shh. He's looking around, wild-eyed, a little bit. 
What's going on? Do we did, can we see the black space on the screen? Is there a screen that was in front of us? Or no? Yeah, there's like there are um, <laughs> like I think shutters that go down. There's also like uh, kind of grainy, you know, cameras outside. Is You're that, gonna want to activate the floods if you want to see whatever's out there. Um, is, that, yeah. is that the ship? Why doesn't it have any lights on? I don't know. I'm liking this less and less every second. Davis, you won't need a, a roll to have the to bring the Montero around uh, to see the ship if you wish to. Yep, so I'll yeah. just swing around to have a look. Okay. I think there's probably a place to control the cameras that uh, is not, you know, it's not only right in front of us. Like you could turn the camera to a different camera. So I think while the ship is moving, maybe uh, Wilson goes over to so they can always kind of look at the ship as they're moving around or something. Yeah. He's controlling the camera, in other words. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He seems pretty eager to see what's out there. And I hate for you guys to be disappointed. <laughs> so this is what you see out there. <laughs> There's no person drifting in space. Not yet. <laughs> but the ship that you see out there, this, this is something out of a history book. Its designation is the USCSS Cronus, C-R-O-N-U-S. It is a Wayland SEV M3 Helides class spacecraft. This thing's been missing, it seems, for about 75 years. Holy shit. We just found a dinosaur. Uh, there, It is not running. The engines are dead. You can tell from the... Uh, sensors. Um, it does appear that there is minimal power, but all exterior and interior lights seem to be off. The only sign of life coming from this is the repeating SOS signal. Mother informs the crew salvage operation is mandated by company rules there are three priorities and miller I'll, I, let me tell you this jeff would you just read them out to everyone or would you want me to would you want uh, to yeah i them? think that she would probably read them out loud at this okay. point like so what you'd see is is uh, you know miller coming out of the um, we'd cut to a scene of Miller cutting out. Wilson maybe is still looking over this thing, you know, studying this ship. Um, this incidentally, like for the players, it's the same model of ship that Wayland used to go to in search of the engineers. The same ship you see in Prometheus. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. The priorities for salvage are one, Recover scientific data and samples from the USCSS Cronus. Priority two, escort the salvaged Cronus to Anchorhead or another Whalen yutani facility. Three, save crew members on the Cronus. I'll be a bit old by now. Uh, but if they're <laughs> in, um, they'll be traveling in cryo. Yeah. Yeah. And then you guys get... Uh, oh, did I not create all? Hold on. I gotta create one more handout here. But I have the full deck for you as well. This is a standard. Uh, what do you call it? Standard layout for this vessel. So here we go, guys. I have for you deck A. That is where the, um, the, what do you call it, airlock is on the top, deck B. We have an actual map we'll be moving around on, but I want you guys to have these in order to reference and strategize kind of where you want to go. Mm. Deck C. Oh my goodness. And space on my computer. Deck D. <laughs> Oh, uh, God. Remember, you can't double click on them to minimize them or you can close them and open them at your leisure. They're open up in the other thing. 
Um, you also had a mind towards the gear. So I'll give you guys this as well. This is your list. Here's the useful gear that uh, Captain Miller can distribute. There are uh, compression suits, five of them. Uh, each of them has an air supply of five. Every, I think it's every two uh, areas you move through. Uh, you can then, you have to make an air supply roll and see if it if it goes down. Um, the, ditto for the power supply. Every two, I think it's every two turns or every every two squares you move through every turn, you make a, that it's active, you make a power supply. And the tra uh, motion tracker works just like in the films. Uh, things that are moving that are f up to four areas away from you will show up on it, even through walls and stuff like that. Um, but if it isn't moving, well, then it won't show up. Uh, cutting <laughs> torch, which I think I might have a card for. Let's see. What's that's the laser, I think. Yeah, it's not that we want. There must be a way to be able to draw this stuff and not have fumbling through card for card here. I just don't know how to do it. There we go. There's the incinerator, guys. <laughs> Looks like a CO2 tank on the bottom of a paintball gun. Yeah. Totally. That is a gun. No. No. You don't have an ATV. You don't have a trailer. You don't have... Oh, actually. Oh, I like incinerator. And this is, I think, a bolt gun. Yep. So there's the bolt gun, if you want to read what that does. There's the harpoon grappling gun. And what I can do is I believe I can put them in your hand, as it were. Mm. So we'll know who's got what here. Yeah. I think that's what we would do at this point. It's like, I got bad news, guys. We're going over there. Okay, so I think, let me see if I, this works, Jeff. No. Nope. Let's see here. Take card, remove card, edit. <laughs> Jeff, can you, uh, let me, hold on. I'm gonna bring us back over here. I wanna see if you can do this. Would you click on, uh, right click on the service pistol? And do you have take card as an option that shows up? Oh yeah, I do. So why don't you take that card? There you go. So I'll move your thing. You can see it's above you right now, Jeff. Above me, above my character? Above your avatar. Be the one? Yeah. Above your camera, yeah. Oh, your avatar, I see. Yeah. So let me bring it back to this here. So there are some other, there's a harpoon gun, there's a bolt gun, and there's an incinerator unit. And I believe you guys only have one of each. Um, you don't necessarily need to distribute this stuff right now as you go across, but if you choose to, you are limited. And there's also the motion tracker. So you have the blueprints for this thing. You have your uh, task. I'll leave it to you guys to discuss what you want to do here now. Well, there we go. Did you find him? Yeah, it was on top of my character, which was like, or on top of my avatar, which, yeah. but you can set it to the bottom. Oh, can you? Yeah, so that it's like, because uh, for me, that's like into my like search. Oh, card yeah, stuff, there we so. go. Good, good. Actually, that works better because I've got uh, the way I've got. Um, yeah, we would be passing everything out. <laughs> like the captain is like, we are taking everything we possibly can with us. Can so, I take you know, right to then sure. Well, so, go ahead and uh, take that then, Davis. yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Take. 
I don't really have a lot of skills with uh that's your call ranged combat so maybe I should take the incinerator probably is easier to shit with oh anything to determine how uh, good or bad things are to hit with uh, the bonus will tell mm -hmm. you Yeah, the incinerator unit has a uh, no bonus to hit. Actually, the most accurate thing is the service pistol. Nothing else gives like you bonus. Is it like an arc of fire or something though? Can you like, or no? No, it just uh, eats something like a torch almost. Yeah, let me double check it and see if that's the case. Here we go. Doesn't say anything like that. Got oh, okay. I just that was the way it was. <laughs> yeah, he also like it does damage like a weapon, and then also has a fire, a thing, and like fire uh, is like a hazard in uh, in the game. Okay. Well, if you can't shoot, maybe you should take the scanner, Wilson. Is that it? It's the scanner. If you say so, Captain. <laughs> hey. Knowing what out, what's out there is just as important as trying to put a bullet in it. Here we go, incinerator. Uh, any Anyone hit by it is also caught on fire with intensity nine. So it is just like any other weapon. You do have to hit the target and then it, uh, you know, it will cause. So. I guess I'll take the bolt gun then and everyone has something. Okay. So one thing to comment with a bolt gun that uh, Wilson should bear in mind, um, explosive decompression. There are rules for that in this game. If you attack a target while you're on a ship and you miss, uh, I then make a roll with six dice to try and uh, to represent the armor of the hull. If I roll enough successes to reduce the damage of your weapon to zero, nothing goes wrong. Armor piercing halves the amount of armor dice I get to roll. So that bolt gun, if you miss with it, uh, I only roll three <laughs> dice to try and reduce. Let's see, what's the damage of the bolt gun? Three. <laughs> so I would have to roll three sixes in order to reduce that. Otherwise, it is effectively guaranteed to pierce the hull of any ship. So, proceed with caution. Maybe. <laughs> Aren't you a maybe great the, shot, uh, Leah? Maybe the harpoon gun's better then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, armor doubled. <laughs> I'm rolling 12 with the hull. <laughs> Yeah, that might make more sense. What? For you to use the harpoon gun as opposed to the bolt gun. Well, I feel a little safer with this bolt gun now. Uh, the three damage <laughs> you sounds good. The, uh, with the explosive decompression. <laughs> <laughs> when you kill everybody with it. Well, I won't do that. I don't even think I need to go over, do I? <laughs> Are you not a uh, employee? Hmm? Oh, it says the, the transmission said all employees. Okay. So, Captain, ultimately, you are the one um, uh, who gets to make the call here, unless you're intending on deferring to Wilson to try and get a good review. But the concern about uh, the it piercing the hull is not unwarranted right are you sure that's the right weapon for you Wilson <laughs> okay so where are we gonna who's gonna have this weapon if I don't have it I guess leave it behind no <laughs> aren't you an awesome shot Leah I am but then that's why I probably want the thing which can burn everything to death with it yeah 
Rai and Cham have no training in ranged combat at all. Although both their abilities are actually okay to satisfy Wilson. So what? Uh, what Miller does is she pulls the pistol out from her, uh, you know, behind her back or whatever. She says, "Look, Wilson, you take this. It's much easier to shoot." Give me that, and she takes the bolt gun. Okay. How so do I? How do we get rid of oh, them? So I think you hand. you can drop them. I can recall them. I can top, bottom, left, or right. If you, uh, if you... oh, here we go. If you click on I it, just... it opens up a a screen. Oh, I can steal the card. Hold up. Okay, let it go. Can you uh, just no try way. to drop it? <laughs> Oh, sorry. oh, you can just drag it out of your yeah. little window. Okay. Like, like uh, as if it's like a little folder, you can just put it back on the Oh, I think I already floor. stole it from... Uh... Yeah, that's fine. I already st- oh, what the oh. hell is it on my screen for? Hold on. Now you made you it go away completely. It. <laughs> oh, there you go. So Hobbs has got the gun. Hold on, let me get this. So do you click it and pull it away? Or what do you do? Oh, okay. I see now. I see. I see what I can do. Gotcha. Yeah, what do you do? Do you... So you just open it so it's sitting there and then you pull it out oh, of that Oh, there area. we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like a normal okay, that's fucking awesome. like on your oh, computer. That's great. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there you go, guys. You swapped your gear. Okay, that's the bolter thing on the floor there now? Yeah, I can make it bigger if you... Uh... There's the okay. bolt gun. Uh, take the card. Here we go. Okay. Yeah. So she gives she gives uh, Wilson the pistol. Okay. Then let's take a look at the rest of the She's gear. Like, she says, I, "I'd pr- I'd much prefer if someone's gonna kill us all. It's me than I'd rather it be me than you." So the power loader is not something you're gonna be able to easily get from your vehicle to the other. Um, but what about the motion tracker? Yeah, we definitely want to bring that. Oh, uh, Ray was really good with uh, con- con- comms, right? Does that mean that's also for like using stuff like that? Yeah, I mean the motion tracker kind of works on its own. You don't need to make it, if something's moving, you'll pick up, you'll pick it up on the tracker, but it won't tell you what it is. Um, oh, okay. There's yeah. also one cutting torch you could bring. Yeah, that's, that's probably useful. Maybe Cham can bring that. Cam? He sounds like an engineer type, is he? Well, we should have the grappling gun in case someone needs it to grapple something. Yeah, uh, let's see here. Oh, and it's probably affecting our encumbrance, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, we don't, right, we don't want to be too encumbered. Uh, Cham so- has heavy machinery. Uh, it, quite, he's quite good with it, which I think is what. Uh, let's take a look at the skill here. Yeah, I think that's what you said before when we were talking about skills. Yeah. Uh, it's used to repair, jury rig, or break any kind of heavy machinery. So, yeah, so that, that would sounds be. Sounds like him. Yeah. Okay, so he'll get the torch. And the grapple gun? Uh, yeah. Who's taking that? Did it automatically affect your encumbrance, or do we have to do something to do Uh, that? I'm just double checking here. I can't remember offhand. It says weight one, so I don't know if we're just supposed to put a number in the weight, or... Uh, Let's take a look. Your skills... Wait half for the service pistol. Okay, here are weapons and gear. Gear. Where is encumbrance in here? Ooh, suits and armor. You guys have armor, right? Mm, oh yeah, lots of it. <laughs> Hmm. OK. 
Okay. Measuring time, maps and zones. I wonder if it's not in the starter set. There we go. Gear encumbrance. Yes, it is. It's right here. Page 29. You can carry a number of regular size items equal to double your strength rating without problems. A regular size item is generally the size of a small bag and weighs no more than a few kilos. Uh, an item designated as heavy counts as two regular items and takes up two rows in your character sheet. Some heavy items count as three or even four times. Um, some things are tiny. Uh, they're so small they don't affect your encumbrance. If it's light, they count as half a regular item. So that'd be the pistol, I guess, Hops, that you were talking about. And then you can carry up to twice your normal encumbrance, so strength times four in items. If you are over encumbered, you must make a mobility roll when you want to run or crawl. If you fail, you must either drop something you're carrying or stay put. So I don't think any of you guys will be over encumbered at this point. Right? No, it's more like if we find start finding things and carrying them or bodies or yeah <laughs> <laughs> can't imagine why you would have that all right <laughs> so then you got everyone together um now before you guys head out does anyone wish to spend any time with their signature item remember you can give us a scene uh in fiction mm -hmm. with your say your signature item that will reduce your stress level by one Oh, right. I forgot we had a stress level already. Uh, yeah, D uh, we Davis do, is two. Yes. I, I don't... I don't think the captain would yet, but... Captain. Leah might want to. Davis? Um, no, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> and Wilson? Um, I don't... I mean, so, uh, is that mean, are we shifting out of, I mean, is this, is it wrong for me to meta ask? Are we shifting out of acts? If we moving over to the other ship, is that act two now, or we don't know yet? Don't know yet. Oh, it's sneaky. Hmm. <laughs> All right. So no. Okay. <laughs> so you guys can, can imagine you're just, you know, everyone's tense and getting their shit together. There's this fucking crypt ship outside how's everyone feeling about this thing being out there pretty remarkable circumstance if you guys run it across this thing hey fascinating i mean what are the odds didn't your great grandmother serve on that thing wilson not that i recall <laughs> Grams on my dad's side wasn't uh, all that communicative to the rest of us. Maybe because she disappeared 73. No, I'm just kidding. I don't really know. <laughs> no. It was just a joke. So first thing that needs to be done here, uh, Davis, if you thought you were getting off for easy, uh, you are mistaken. You will need to match the ship's speed and course in order to board her. So this will be a simple piloting role for the pilot let's go for it sir come on then let's bring her alongside we go so any ones on those two yellows means you have panic correct kevin yep yep but he's fine he's got the, all you needed is one success in most cases all you need is just the one so davis what does it look like as you um as you bring this the uh, Montero yeah, alongside. Swoop, her, swoop in just a little bit of bit of flair to uh, bring in. Okay. And I'm like, yeehaw! Then click, nail it on the on the mm. uh, docking panel. Right. Okay. There says, you are. That's how you do it. Uh, the um, the Cronus, incidentally, is about a third the size of the Montero. And that's why we pay you the big bucks, Davis. Okay. So it's it's smaller than us. A third the size of you, yeah. Oh wow. Much smaller. It looks bigger with its uh, the deck plan. Cool. Because okay. of the uh, so much of the deck plan, there is more to the Montero. It, the only reason nothing interesting is happening anywhere else on the ship. Okay, it's just uh, yeah, cargo, yeah, cargo and stuff like that. Think of the Nostromo, right? Like the Nostromo, you you're seeing um, like 
uh, maybe three sets in the entire thing, uh, including the landing ship. All the rest of the, the that thing is uh, is just like all, you know, storage space and whatnot. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I mean, I'll take the grappling gun if we're just just to hold it if you want. Because I mean, I have lots of room, and I'm probably not going to be doing a ton of other things, so I can just be like a mule if that would help, Captain. Yep. Now maybe we should be wearing the suits as well. Yeah. No point in leaving it behind. Well, there is no, uh, as far as you can tell, there's no, there is likely no yeah, atmosphere, no, uh, or at the very least, it's gonna be freezing. Yeah, we need that. We need the suits. Okay. All right. So everyone's getting uh, suited up on this, and you got yourself in position. Uh, now it's just a matter of extending an umbilicus between the two. Uh, this is gonna be a heavy machinery roll. Mm. So would you like uh, Cham? Take care of that for you. Well, I would like them to, yes. Okay. Can I move this down? <laughs> I like the music on this. I was just thinking that, man. Yeah. <laughs> White Bat Audio, we have to thank for this again. Fucking love his stuff. Okay. Um... And then, 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 heavy machinery. Here we go. No, oh, for fuck's sake. Come on. Oh, you fucking thing. I, these sticky character sheets are just such a fucking nightmare to deal with. Here we go. I really need real problems because <laughs> this is the extent of the thing it's making me lose sleep. Is he gonna push it? He has to, doesn't he? If he wants a success. I think one of you could, in theory, spend a story point, I guess. Because we each have one story point right now. Mm. He is an NPC right now, so I'll let you spend for him, or you can get him to push. I, I, I think the captain would get him to push. Okay. So that means he would take a stress, right? It means he's got one stress level, yep. Yeah. So he actually should be at two right now. So here we Get go. Get it, Cham. Here we go. Ooh, panic. <laughs> no God. successes and a panic. So oh my God, Cham. Let me grab my DM or my mother's screen here. Would you, uh, Captain, give us, you're the one who is responsible for this, give us a 2d6 uh, plus one roll. Oh, plus two roll. 2d6 plus two. Oh, two, two. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. No, it's 1d6 plus two. Ignore me. Oh. Yeah, I think it's 1d6 for panic. Oh, whoops. Can't say. Okay. Ooh. Five. So he's upset. Now, we're going to deal with... The consequences in a second here. I'm gonna double check. So his stress level doesn't go up again. Yeah, yeah, it just means that he is panicking. So he's trying to get this thing down, and you can picture like this much bigger vessel is drifting over this. You've matched speed with him, uh, Leah. He's trying to get this thing down, and it hits. But then there is a... Oof. It's dragging along the side of it, and it seems to be causing damage uh, to the um, Montero. Oh, shit. Yeah. Let's see here. The... Oh, ship ones aren't here. It's in the... All right, um, let's see, let's see, let's see what's gonna happen. You know, I'll look at the vehicle, here we go. That's not bad with, with 18 dice managed to not roll one six. 
Yeah. He tried. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I think this is just component damage. He's damaged the uh, the umbilicus here. Mm. Oh, so, man. Um, oof. I think that... Um, this is tough. I think the captain, like, pushes him aside. Here, let me do it. You gonna try yourself? Why? I think it's generally you can't. Once someone tries a task, they cannot do it again oh. unless circumstances change. That's one of the things. That's sort of a, a signature thing about um, the free league. These like year zero games is once you've tried something, circumstances have to change in order to have it happen again. And someone else just trying might not be a sufficient change. Oh, I see. Like right, he couldn't do it, so that means I can't do it unless we change something. Exactly. So you right. could, uh, like, for instance, you could, like, as in the come around again, come around again, yeah. Davis, and then have someone like drift down and be at the end of it and trying to manually move the thing down. I'm sure nothing will go wrong with that. <laughs> what do you guys think? What's yeah, effectively so happened right now is that the da there has been some damage done to the coupling, so the the umbilicus is not going to couple properly with the ship you're, you're key, definitely davis is keeping you pace but you need to figure out a way to get yourself on board there so it sounds like someone does need to mechanically adjust the the umbilical onto the ship yeah yeah like out possibly out and <laughs> floating out in space what what's what would that use to do that uh it would use a uh, probably heavy machinery Oh man. And strength. See the captain like I have no training. I only have strength. I have no actual you training. Do, you, in. you guys do have story points, so remember story points can buy a success automatically. Oh, that's right. Yeah. You know what? Actually, I, I think that like she sees that like um Cham is like noticeably shaken and she's like I'll just have to go out there and line it up myself. Okay. And she'll like, you know, basically like you said, like manually. But and I have to roll first, don't I? You have to, well, let's just set up the, the scene first. So you're gonna head outside. Um, if you brought someone else with you, you might be able to get a, uh, they would give a plus one to the number of dice you'd be rolling. Oh. Yeah, you know what? I think I'll bring Cham. Like, maybe I think if we work together, like, yeah. that might calm him down and, like, we'll get some success and, like, you know. Yeah. Do you want him doing it then? He's carrying a bit of a stress level. They're NPCs too, so if you wanted him to... Cham's... Signature item. item is a rosary. He's a Catholic. Oh. We could see him kind of, you know, working his rosaries. The... the, the Chances, the thing is, though, that they do give the extra chance of success. Like, they do add extra dice to the roll. So, oh, right. Yeah. What True. do you think? Um, I don't want him panicking while we're out there, though. Okay. So. Uh, maybe she knows. And, you know, she's the kind of captain who would, like, uh, know enough to like probably you know say some little prayer with him or something like kind of trigger him to calm down like you know she's yeah. she's worked with this crew enough that she's you know yeah so the big man kind of you know takes it off and he uh he's probably got it around his his uh neck and, and kind of works the rosaries it's like no we can do this captain we can do this all right you know helmet on he probably stands a good head taller than you too he's got a i think his strength is like a five yeah he's, he's, like a, he's big a big dude yeah strength is a five so he's a great big dude he's like all right captain you know it's attached Together. on. so are you picturing you guys are going to go outside and like lower the umbilicus down and then try and attach it yeah basically like get it yeah get it manually much closer okay and then, uh, and like you said, it's it's a little damaged, so. Yeah. Now, um, what the hell? Davis 
and uh, Wilson and Rye. They're all staying inside. Yeah. Okay. Well, we need Davis to continue to keep the ship in the right spot while we perform this. Okay. It's a little too dangerous to uh, not have that support. Yeah, so I want you to picture uh, for a moment um, the absolute blackness that would be everywhere that the floods don't shine. Mm -hmm. And then the blinding light that would come from the floods. So you're almost trading yeah. off from being almost like near blinded if you're facing the floods or, you know, um, and there are lights on your hell on your uh, EV suits as well. But there is going to be a sp time when you're drifting down, having only the tether to attach you as you're heading down to the uh, this uh, corpse ship. It's definitely tense. OK, so you I think that the captain, it's like one of those situations where, like, I think if she thought through more, she'd actually be more scared and nervous. But because she's like doing this to support her crew, it's more, you know, like she's much more focused on him and getting him back doing his job. That's it sort of doesn't process in a way, you know, it's almost like, you know, yeah, a combination of sort of the adrenaline and, the you know, Okay. Commanding aspect of the way she works that. Okay. So you head down and uh, are you taking the lead so you could use your story point? Yeah, that's the plan. Okay. He's helping me. So do heavy it. weapons at plus one. All right, here we go. Let's go. Or heavy machinery, right? Yeah. Heavy machinery, yeah. yeah. With pl okay. plus one. No, don't put the plus in, just the one. Right. You got your one success. You're not even going to oh. need to. All right, so it gets down, and what's it look like is you and uh, Cham in, you know, over the comms, you hear your heavy breathing, get this thing attached again. Yeah, like, I think it's just like, I think there's like a... Um... There's sort of like an understanding between us. And like, I think you can tell that it's like, you know, we've done some stuff together and, you know, there's a lot of hand signals and a lot of like, you know, actions where you can tell we've worked together on other things on the ship. And, you know, he's much calmer with the captain sort of backing him up. Yeah. As we sort of, probably the captain drifts out and he's like holding, you know, physically holding this thing as, she sort of lines it up and pulls it in. So as you're pulling it in, um, Cham points at this thing. Says, Captain, does that, does that look damaged to you? And the airlock itself on the top of the, uh, of the Kronos, it actually looks like it is buckled out from the inside. Oh. Yeah, that does look badly damaged. You think we'll be able to get in? He grins at you and, and is like, we're getting in there one way or another, but that's weird. That's weird. Don't make a big deal about it to the others. I won't. So, you complete getting the Montero's um, uh, umbilicus attached and then you're able to drift back up. Now, that would, however, likely take uh, a turn. So I think you need to make a roll for, you should be able to add to your supplies. One of them is air. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Right, we have five air? Five air. Oh yeah, there it is. Uh, so from five down to four then. No, no, no. What you do is you roll. Oh. With no modifiers. One success, which means it goes down. I think it goes down by one. Let me double check that. I saw where that was. Again, for those listening at home, I do apologize. First time playing the game, so. Yeah. We have to want to okay. make sure we're using all the moving parts correctly. Yeah. Try to get the rules right. Um, 
Oh, it is only when you roll a successes do not matter. It's only when you roll a little alien symbol. For every alien symbol, it's decreased by one. Oh, okay. So go ahead and roll your air if you click on it. Okay, so if I click on air. Yeah. It should have a five in it, right? It should have a five in it, yeah. Uh, okay. You're good. There we go. Okay. Everyone, right, so ones means you've lost one of, you've finished one of your airs. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, if you rolled, a, like I just said, if, if you roll an alien symbol, not a yeah. success, an alien symbol, then you reduce it by a number of alien symbols you rolled. If I rolled three oh, alien symbols, I'd yeah, reduce yeah. it by three. Right. That's like something could have happened that like... Panicking, it's, exactly. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they drift back up and you guys get yourself there. Now, is everybody heading on over to the Cronus? Yeah, you better have a good so. reason if you're not coming. I'd better stay here and look after the ship. No. <laughs> no I'll, be, I'll be keen to get in here. This is it's, This is exciting. Yeah. Think of, sure better than you... the usual mundane hauling of cargo. Come on, Captain, let's go look. Do you want me to see if I can get some information about what the Kronos was about from Mother? And then I'll meet you there. Mm, the, the late arriving crew member. The Captain likes it. Yeah, leaving the... <laughs> the Wayland Utani guy uh, on the ship. Yeah, right. That ain't gonna happen. Yeah. <laughs> so then, everyone is heading over, or are you letting Wilson check with? I, I mean, first? I'm not stopping him. Like, if if he suggests something at this point, I'm like, well, to be clear, you're also the captain. Think no, I know. The, yeah, like because. Uh, Inter-party conflict is not necessarily a bad thing in this. Remember, Dallas had to put uh, Ripley in place. I mean, he right. was wrong. <laughs> it turned out he was fucking wrong. But uh, that's what happens, you know? I mean, I do see the value in what he's trying to do. Okay. I mean, whether it's, you know, foolish or not, that's... <laughs> that's also <laughs> part of the fun. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, just to ch just to check, Jeff, does uh, does your character have naive as one of her characteristics? Or <laughs> she doesn't feel this. I don't think she feels at all the same way about Wilson as the rest of the crew. Uh, I think he's one of her rivals. Yeah, he's a rival. Yeah. What does so that mean exactly? You feel worse about him than we do. <laughs> yeah. Like, what does that mean mechanically, though? Like, I feel like that's like. Well, it's, it's something you're to role play. Oh, I see. You're antagonistic. Okay. Davis and Miller are buddies. Wilson is a rival for Miller. Uh, oh, I see. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's one of the reasons right. why I selected these three characters as sort of the first three to play, because the other two like one another, and um, Rye hates Miller. Right, but I think of it more like if we get over there, maybe it's more like, hey, if we get over there and we pull off all the success, we don't have to give any credit to Wilson. Yeah, I, the only reason I mention it is because like part of the um, the because these are you know you know to a degree scripted. That's sort of like there are certain expectations of of the game playing out in a certain way when you play up those rivalries or the buddies. Right. Uh, but the things we can do is Davis can be the one who swaps over. It's, it seems like we've been role playing where Davis has had a rival for for Wilson, as opposed to Miller having rivalry with Wilson, and Davis and Miller are both buddies. Right. So if I mean if Davis is telling, like that's what I'm saying. Like if Davis is saying like don't leave him here, then I probably would. You know. Oh well, I, I guess. I, 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 it's, I'm just joking because of having seen Aliens and uh, Burke and all the rest of it. So. But again, when there's a rivalry, it is absolutely uh, part of the game and in the spirit of the of the game. Right. Yeah, sure. It's just playing. I don't have a rivalry, so I was just joking about yeah. Uh, so just him, but yeah. Does that? Uh, why? Sorry, I should have made that clear before we started uh, playing, guys. Does that make sense now as to how the rivalries and the things are supposed mm -hmm. to play out? Yep. Right. But I mean, I, I guess like that's like. Right. I may not let him do things that he wants to do for his reasons, but you know. 
it's characters who don't get along full stop. Like it's Absolutely. a way of right. like, it's giving you the yeah. way of role playing out of like you piss me off, whatever you do. Think of it in, in any one of the films. There's always that tension between Gorman and you know um, and Hudson uh, in Aliens. Uh, there's Dallas and Ripley in the original film. Uh, that's just the tension in the crew, the pre-existing tension that then boils over over the course of the story. That's yeah, kind like of part of the play experience. Vasquez and uh, Bill, Bill, whatever his character's name was, I can't remember. In Aliens, uh, it's Hudson, isn't uh, it? It's, it, it's, oh, it's Vasquez and Gorman. Right? Yeah, Gorman. Yeah, who's the uh, Gorman lieutenant? Is, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You're going to be coming over with us, Wilson. Oh, all right, Captain. I I don't want to cause any trouble. It just seems like any information we could get would be. Look, I yes. gave you the pistol. We need it with us. You want to stay here? Give me back my pistol. Hmm. Well, you, you did. I think I think there would be the thing where you would kind of turn away and you'd see the reflection again, and he would say. Yeah, but you took away the other gun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. I, I don't want to cause any trouble. Good. Let's go. All right. So then, let me grab our tokens here. And we're entering into stealth mode now. Mm. Oh, Stealth mode is the, this is kind of like in old school play, you could think of it as like um, turn-based. And basically every round you guys can move, there we go, uh, you can move two squares Oh, an important question I had not thought of. Uh, who is holding the uh, motion tracker? I thought you were giving it to Rye. Who hates yeah, I, th I wasn't. I wasn't sure if like the same kind of like computer rolls or calm rolls. No rolls are necessary for it. You just. Oh see. right, no roll. Okay, but I still see it as a piece of tech. So yeah, I'll give it to Rye. Okay. All right. So then it will be yet another heavy machinery roll to, to gain access through this airlock, because it, it is pretty fucked up. Mm. Do, well, we, let's check. do we all have a certain air or anything like that because we're in our suits now? Or? Yep, everyone yeah, should be five. at five air. And then every two zones you move through, basically, each zone, it's in, it's assumed you're able to look around and like inspect places and whatnot as you're doing this, but every two zones you move through, then we make a roll again. So, mm. yeah, it's pretty great. Yeah. Okay. So then what, um, all the zones count as dark, uh, which means as you come in here, uh, observation rolls in the zone, getting minus two modification range attacks in the zone also, uh, suffer a minus two modification and can't pass through the zone. So if it's dark, you can't shoot stuff outside of the zone you're in. Um, you do have, then that's assuming that you've got functioning lights on your ship, on your uh, on your suits. So, and well, sorry, I was checking to see about the torch. I wonder if the tool gives you a bonus to your heavy machinery roll. That's often how tools work in these kind of games. Mechanical. Oh, right. Yeah. And yeah, we're kind of trying to get in, right? Yeah. So, so this will give you a plus two modification. So uh, do you want um, Champ to take care of this? And I'll let one other person assist. Yeah, I think that um, I would get Cham to uh, open it and maybe Davis to assist since uh, she has the torch. But... Uh, I think that I pulled a bolter out and I've sort of got it like uh, over Ch uh, Cham's shoulder, like kind of to, you know, make him feel confident. Like, I got you covered, buddy. Yeah. Okay, what is... Hold on. 
take it easy with that bolter, Captain. We don't want to <laughs> harm. We don't want to harm uh, Wayland uh, equipment here, property. Of course not. Okay. Look, we'll get the job done. You can always weld the thing back shut uh, once again, if need be. Well, there's no atmosphere as well, then there's no... Let's see. If there's no atmosphere, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no uh, whatever explosive decompression. Yeah. <laughs> Very true. Your head-mounted lamp. Let's I don't just... like having our air be limited, though. It'd be better if we could get like the power core going and keep atmosphere in the sh in the Chronos while we look around. Look, dream a little dream, Wilson. This thing is over seventy years old. Well built back in the day. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, sorry. <laughs> hey. Uh, then, so I was just checking to see how much light I should be giving you guys. And I think I have my answer. Here we go. Uh, okay, I'm just going to give each your tokens. Uh, you have vision, but I forgot to give you night vision. There we go. Can, can everyone see now? Nope. Oh, why the heck not? How is this fucking set up? They've got dynamic lighting set on here, but I have no earthly... Oh, because I think maybe because you're not there? No, that's not right. Hold on, I'm just set up here. Now that's darn peculiar. Okay, they sorry, they had dynamic lighting set up on it, but they didn't have it turned on on the page. It's like yeah. all the maps set up. I was like, why is this not fucking working? Oh, it's because, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, that is creepy. Okay, love it. So this is the number of dice. So like, it, if you could give us an idea, obviously zero in a skill, but you're still getting your attribute dice yeah. number. Like, yeah. how good is a one? So here's or they a actually two? have a chance of success. Oh, you know what? Do I, I might have it on here? There, helpfully they they put in uh, for most of these like a chance of success. Uh, for the rules, first so it rules. Here we go. Oh, I like to give you an idea. Yeah, so that you have an idea of um, like what your chances of success are. Uh, skills, rolling dice, combat impact. Well, I guess you have like what an eighteen percent chance per dice. Yeah, sixteen per die, right? Or no? Here you go, guys. How about I do this? Yeah, Boom. that chart's really useful. There's the rolling dice thing. Is right at the bottom. Uh, there is the chance of success when you with a flat roll and then also with a pushed roll. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I said sixteen. You said eighteen. That's so funny. <laughs> oh, and here's, you know what, while I'm doing this, guys, this, here's your skills. These are all handouts in the uh, sections. And then here's the list of all the skills for each. And what you can spend your extra successes on, your stunts. Mm, nice. Okay. And then here's the rules for stealth mode as well. A lot of nice handouts. They're really nice, yeah. And there's a bit, a bit of motion trackers in there. Okay. Uh, and then here is Combat and Panic. Close Combat. And oh range gosh. combat. So I have all the rules available for you guys. Stress and panic. And then other hazards like explosive decompression. 
<laughs> I'm I'm sure this ship is just full of treasures and candy and yep. so lounge chairs. Um, is Cham making the check to try and access this? Yeah, that was what I was thinking. Unless yeah. Okay. So then it'll be heavy machinery, and he's going to get plus three because of uh, one from you helping and two from the torch. Yeah, this is interesting right here, Jeff. It's the group rolls when he was talking where we can't try it again. You can only try it once, but as many people as you can say can help, you get an extra die or whatever. Yep. So that's what we should be thinking more of, maybe ways that each guy can help on rolls. Yep. But, yeah. but if but if there is a failure, then everyone is affected by it, which is pretty cool. Anyone who engages in that. Yeah, action. so here's where the panic oh, comes in. Yeah, yeah. So would you first give us a 1d6 for for your... Uh, 1d6 plus 1 for Cham? Oh, got, yeah. got three successes on this. Oh, oh it keeps getting lower the more... Well, he only has one stress now. Well, his, he's adding... Remember, his stress was at a two, and then you got him to look at his rosary. Yeah. So he's down to a one now. Five, so he's okay. He manages to keep it together, which means he's got two extra successes on um, this. However, because you were helping him, you need to make a panic roll. And I think you can do that directly from your character sheet. Mm. Uh Yeah. Let's see. I've got so many sheets now. <laughs> Finding my characters not as quick. Uh, panic. Excuse me. Do you just click on the stress level? I think, I, I really don't know actually. Is there a panic button somewhere? Oh yeah, this works, I think. Panic. Did you click on the stress level button? Yeah, I just clicked on the stress level. I see, it, it should say panic there or something, shouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So it's a six uh, plus one. Uh, so yeah. Let's see here. Um, one d six plus your current levels. That's a you rolled a seven. So uh, Miller, tell us what you say, because your stress level is going to go up by one, and everybody else's is going to go up by one because they're all down in an umbilicus ready to go in. Mm. So he wanted to roll low there? Uh, he wanted to roll low, yeah. You, if you roll oh, a seven shit. or higher, that's when the shit goes wrong. Okay, so I got another stress. Uh, as does everybody. Everybody's, because it's it's what happens is you got, the result was nervous twitch. Your stress level and the stress level of all friendly PCs in short range of you increased by one. So that would be, because you guys are all down in the umbilicus and you're trying to gain access to this, Whatever yeah. your reaction is, it causes everyone else to freak out. I know, and I see, I, I, I would say like she fired a bolt and panic, but like that's like a limited resource. But I guess I could say that, yeah. I, well, no, no, no. Like it, you don't need to. Uh, what, what it is, it's more a reaction. <laughs> like this is Bro, like, okay. Yeah. I think she just screams. Maybe she thinks she sees something as they're prying the doors open. Okay. You know the way her light, yeah. the way her headlamp like moves across the glass pane or something she thinks she sees something and like lets out a, a scream yeah yeah like it, you know a uh just sort of um enough to probably freak everyone out right yeah yeah and everyone's suits kind of clatter together so davis and wilson you should have your stress level up by one more mm -hmm. done then that is however however he did get to two extra successes so let's just see if there is anything interesting you can do with this what is it miller so forget wilson forgets to say captain because he's starting to freak out mm. so he's gonna yell out at um the captain what is it miller what because i mean obviously we would have some reaction of her reaction so. right it's nothing i trick of the light okay so here's some of the stunts that you can do with uh, heavy machinery. Gain plus one modification to a later skill roll relating to this one. Uh, you don't need to roll, you got this. Uh, you don't need to roll to overcome the exact same challenge in the future. So you could fix the, um, the oh. latch. 
Um, he does it quickly in half the time. He uh, breaks it permanently. He acts quietly or he shows off. He can pick two of those. What do you guys think? Which two of those do you want in addition to him getting access to the Cronus? Um, I guess I'm imagining that um, maybe he's fixed it so we don't have to do this challenge in the future. Okay. Almost he's got it, you know, pried open enough or whatever that we can uh, quickly get through this airlock if we need to later. No reason, no, no, no planning ahead or anything, but. I thought it did it in a way to uh, relock it if we need to, though, successfully as well, right? You said it was fixed. It's fixed. Oh, so yeah, that's he's. Yeah. Okay, and then what do oh, you? So and he, and he can do two half things. Half the time, half the time, right? No, I don't know. Half the time. Okay, so he quickly gets it open and pops it. Maybe Miller, you weren't expecting it to be done that fast, but opens and it also up. maybe it doesn't count towards air or something that way or an air check or yeah 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 you know what then moving into this zone won't count it'll be the two zones afterwards i buy that hops yeah nice okay. yeah so you guys get it open and you all drift in let me bring you over to where you are i'm focused there we go Very i nice. need to take a pee yeah yeah we, i think we as you guys are drifting, we're at our let me ping where you guys are this is where you are you can compare you do have those deck plans that you will have access to at any point so you can compare that to where you guys are in relation and where you plan on going but let's take our mid-session break right now we got a collective bunch of old men bladders here that uh, likely need attention <laughs> our supply dice for uh for that are exceeded so we'll take a quick break here and then we'll be back momentarily and see what awaits our explorers on the Cronus. So back momentarily.
I like these games that are more designed for like uh, one shots or, you know, a few sessions, maybe. They're kind of fun as to play once in a while. Yeah, exactly. It's a change of pace. All right. So, and yeah. it's obviously wired for the fact your character's going to be dead by the end of it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't think we're all I'm... making it off this ship. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I I haven't quite figured out how the uh, campaign version of this works. I mean, I know it does, but this is definitely seems built for what it for cinematic. The thing I I don't, and I mean, I'm sure there's a logic behind it, but it seems to me that the um like campaign play doesn't incorporate story points, and it feels like if you want to be spending time with these characters and seeing them develop, story points are the thing that the narrative meta currency that lets them survive the horrific bullshit they're going to come across you would think but yeah who knows i mean like the the designers of the game seem to know what they're doing <laughs> so uh because like the um colonial there's a, a ongoing campaign uh in the colonial marine one that is more than just like um you know these and like this is i, I i've heard that this is it says it's recommended for a four hour four to five hour session I feel like this would take me a lot longer to run just because of the way I run games. Um, but Destroyer of Worlds, like that one for sure is... That's big. It's big. There's lots of cool shit to do. And it's a it's a quasi sandbox with shit going on. I mean, all these are, are written that way. Uh, so, I mean, um, the thing that's cool about the... I think you can easily like mix the rules up. Like, they're not so different in the modes that you wouldn't be able to mix and match ideas. I don't think, but because yeah. Anthony ran a Colonial Marines campaign, right? Yeah, I think, I think he ran the. Um, uh, for those listening at home, it's a uh, Rune Slinger, uh, another YouTube channel, uh, and our friend uh, Anthony. Um, he ran it, yeah, and, and I think he had uh, similar. Uh, I mean, I, I didn't watch any of them yet, uh, but. Uh, I know it was going on for quite some time, so I mean... Mm. I mean, I guess you can do a little bit of a slow bleed to the the deaths, you know? <laughs> well, and you have I've to... I've always found that's... A... Yeah, the, the, all of these military ones, like Mercenary and um, Traveller or anything like that, it always puzzles me, because you, you, you must have long... It's like real things, right? Long periods of talking and doing... Um, menial stuff and then suddenly everybody dies <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. the um the neat thing with uh um with the, all these mutant zero games though is that like when you hit zero health you don't necessarily die right like you roll for critical hits and the critical hits there can be ones that are like auto crit death but some of them are fairly minor and and you know you're able to treat them quite well or some of them are just uh you know, uh, they're gruesome um, and they'll affect you, but you're not dead. So it can... Uh, That's good. Yeah, I'm, we should try now, it. I'm not sure it's the case, but uh, from doing um, phase and briefly and everything, it feels very swingy, which doesn't matter in Alien because yeah. you know, weird shit and everything going wrong is part of it. But again, in a long-term thing where you've meant to be competent it uh, it can feel a bit mm. it's where the story points like story points are in this and there's something similar i think in forbidden lands and there is um something similar to story points in um tales from the loop uh and I, that i think helps smooth over a little bit of the harshness of this especially if you're getting story points back every round or every mm. uh, act you know so yep all right, so guys, this is where you come in. This will be your first uh, zone. What you can see uh, is that uh, there actually is a... Uh, uh, there actually is a... Um, what do you call it? Um, an atmosphere uh, in here. 
Oh, yeah. That's shocking. Uh, it is absolutely frigid uh, in here. Well, you can tell from this uh, from the readings in your suits. Uh, if you uh, open up, it, you will be able to breathe in here. Uh, but it is very stale and freezing, so you will be taking, making stamina rolls against the cold once per turn. So you may oh. want to keep your suits active for for now. In addition, this has a ladder that seems to go down to deck B and deck C. So we're currently on deck A currently on deck A. Yeah, if you open up your Dude, I don't have deck A. map here, you're at junction A1 right now. Hmm. I got so many flipping things open. <laughs> oh, here we go. I mean, you can close them and reopen them, guys. Like, they're all underneath your right. things now. No, I, I know, yeah. I do have it. Yeah. Okay, but where the hell do we want to go? So. so sorry, you were saying where where are we on the planet A? A1. The stairwell. Yeah, you're at A1. junction okay. A1. And then what that gotcha. does is that uh, stairwell, it goes, or the uh, um, ladder, it, it heads down to deck B and deck C. Yeah, I think we want to... Go down to like B junction B one, yep. and then because that's the where the there. like bridge. Yeah, let's go to the bridge first. That's the plan. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So you guys head down to B one. Let me grab everybody and. I have to well, zoom out. As we're moving through, can we see what maybe would have caused the uh, the outward bulging of the um, of the hatch? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, why don't you give us an observation check there, Wilson? If you're getting everyone else to take a look too, you can uh, take a let's say ooh, a plus two to it. Do it. Do I put plus two or uh, just I just a two, not the plus two. symbol? Yeah, that's yeah. What I plus symbol will uh, cause it to malfunction. Screw everything up. There you go. Ooh. That's stress dice that helps you. <laughs> now that that's kind of peculiar. Can I have two stress dice? Oh, you two stress dice, but it's the one stress dice is the thing that gave you the success, though. They always put the successes at the start. Yeah, the target. Yeah, yeah. Now, dueling. listen, I'm not going to make this count. I am curious of whether it keeps that one. I'm just going to push your roll. Well, look at that. It kept that one. Added two more. So maybe it does do that. Yeah. Yeah, it does. I think it does. Yeah, yeah. The, the okay, case earlier really cool. was it, it didn't do it because I re-rolled it completely. And right, then it right, right. Reset. And, yep. we, and in this case, we so you're, you don't take that. Uh, you're not going to get your, what do you call it, your panic. Right, one success was enough. Yeah, yeah. So okay. pushing can just give you like those great results like uh, Cham had. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe you need more successes or if you want to have bonus successes for like you said, adding damage or a greater. Right, like yeah, if it's stunts. combat, you might really want to get a bunch of successes yeah. compared to just a single. Yeah. Okay. This has a lot of interesting, intricate p mechanisms all you know, churning in the same direction for a particular type of story. Yeah, it's the thing that's neat about, all, like, uh, I find interesting about all these uh, Year Zero games is that it seems like the real, it like, they really come to life when they're in motion, right? Like where you you get to, it's like old school gaming, right? Like old school gaming, you can see it and it's, it's interesting on the paper, but once you get playing and all the things like tracking encumbrance and torches and shit like that, like all that stuff really adds to the experience. Now, let me bring you down to junction B1. I think I've got uh, to bring you to a space in between first here. So don't worry. Oh, no, I can bring you over. Let's see here. Can I get this? 
What is going on? Oh, for fuck's sake. <sighs> Hold on. Something's fucking up with my, either my uh, thing here or... Well, 20. I'm going to guess it's probably me. <laughs> oh, for fuck. <laughs> Roll 20 or drive me fucking crazy. Hold on. There we go. I see. You need to roll two stress dice now. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> uh, it is just here's what I'm gonna do. This is fucking easier. I've copied you. I'll just paste you. I think I'm hitting uh, like the invisible walls, and it might be preventing me from moving your things through, which it shouldn't oh, because yeah. I'm the game master. So, uh, so that's where you guys are. Now, I'm bringing you down to it because when you get down there. Uh, Rye, you can hear whee, whee. there's movement coming. Now take a look at the um, deck plan for B. Mm -hmm. This is in the living area. Something uh, is moving in there. How the hell is someone alive? Something that shouldn't be li living is in the living area. Uh, would you all raise your stress levels by one, please? Uh, and the captain would ask, like, androids are a thing, right? Yep. I think the ca the captain would say, does anyone know how long an android can survive? It easily, they can both, uh, androids can't be stored in, uh, um, what do you call it? The uh, the pods, just like uh, humans can, and mm. they can also, yeah, they can, they can. This only you're not talking hundreds of years; you're talking seventy five. Right. Okay, so I've I've raised uh, Cam and Rise stress levels. So you still have one more move. If you'd if like. only I'd had the opportunity to look more into what the Kronos might have on it, I would know if there was an android captain. <laughs> yeah, and we'd also not have our pistol with us if this thing is hostile. Well, let's go check it out. Could be a survivor. Reminds me of Stranger Things a little bit, the music. <clears throat> totally, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then, what do you guys do? Carry on down to C? Or are you planning on going out on B here? E C, so C, the C um, is where we see the movement. Remember, hit W if you want to whisper. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, look at this. So, I'm Captain, so excited. What do I we do? It up. Go see what's moving or go to the bridge as we planned? We better see if someone's alive. Yeah, we. Uh, I think we have I'd to. Want, I'd want another crew to do that for me. Yeah, yeah, let's go. Let's go check. This could be a survivor. I just want to double check one thing. Um, I think. I think. I think. Uh, for resting, because I think resting takes one turn. Um. Yeah, every full turn you spend resting in a safe area that is secured from enemies, your stress level is reduced by one point. So what, you, what you'd be rolling for is your air supply, but you could be safe. But you have one more move you can do as part of this move turn. Where do you want to go, guys? Oh, that's what I was trying to clarify, Kev. The movement's on C, right? Uh, no, no, no. The movement is in the living area on B. If you look at the... Oh, on B. Oh, okay. Then, yeah, we want to move towards the... Uh, let's see here. The living area. We're going to move out of the junction on the uh, armory side, or at least that's what Wilson's going to do. On the armory side? Okay. Because, I mean, he wants one of those bolters, obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so... Our incinerator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so the, <laughs> the door is open. 
Now, and let me tell you if there's anything interesting in B here. Yeah, the ladder here is good. Looks like this, all the uh, things open. If you open the door to vestibule one, uh, it's again, just so dark in here. And uh, who would like to be the first one into the hallway? Uh, I will. Okay. I'll go. Go ahead. So, uh, Davis. Uh, come on. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I'm looking the map. Out. Okay. And would you like to open up Vestibule I need to 1? Zoom in. Yep. Okay, okay, so I'll try opening Vestibule 1. Okay. Um, it, there is nothing to <sighs> worry about here. Let me now, get... Vestibule 1 is listed as being the armory. Oh, you know what? Hold up. I need to do one thing. I think that you guys are moving through walls here. Hold up. Uh. Oh. Yeah. Why oh, that someone open that door? Dynamic laws. Here we go. Block. Restrict movement, so there we go. It is so dumb that they they still have that on the map page instead of on the uh, um, the dynamic lighting page. So I routinely forget. But here, let me get this open for you. The reason I want you to wait is because when you open that up, Davis. Yeah, don't go in there yet. <laughs> what you can see. Uh, there is a slumped over headless body oh. of a man in a spacesuit. There is a splatter of blood and brain matter on the wall behind him, and a model 37A2 shotgun sitting next to him. I'm going to say, it sounds like he shot himself. So you would see that as soon as you go in. Uh, it sounds like Wilson and Davis were the ones who were pushing at the door there. Uh, yes. Uh, each of you, your stress level goes up by one. Yeah. I'm at five now. Okay. Ooh, let's see if anything happens. I'm at four, yeah. Okay. And with that as well, why don't... Um, let me check what your... Anything happens at five. No, it just means that if you panic at some point here, things are going to go really interesting. All right, so um, um, that's what I'm going to fumble in my pocket. And I'm just going to, uh, when nobody's looking, and I'll uh, just pop a pill or two. How? You're in a spacesuit. <laughs> oh, shit. Good point. <laughs> I mean, you can pop it open and it's, it's fucking cold, but you could do that and... and uh, yeah, it's hard that. to do stealthily. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think, Davis? Hot air steam comes out all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do that and then slam the uh, slam that shut. Okay. Okay. So you uh, do that. Uh, so you can reduce your um, stress level by one. I mean, we're we're good friends, so you know it's probably not a secret to the captain, I guess. Unless you, so I've kept it a secret, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, you've probably figured out. So, here you is... Can already, you can already see Wilson making notes in his yeah. uh, mental... <laughs> Doesn't matter. Wilson will be dead by the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to find the shotgun for you, too. If, if Wilson's dead, he's likely the last person alive. Boom, boom, boom. Well, then, <laughs> it'll just be you and your shotgun. <laughs> bolter that so there is something else of interest here um yeah it's uh, how old is this like the the ship no the uh if we've got blood and brains over the wall you know is that 75 year old blood and brains or yeah it does. after 75 years that'd be uh okay well, let me see is this I'm trying to make sure i got the right 37 i do is anyone picking up a shotgun? 
I will. Mm. If there's silence there, I'll grab Well, I'm it. kind of was contemplating it, but then I'm already like have all these guns on yeah. me already. So, so there's the card, like, uh, uh, Davis, if you want to pick that up. No, oh, Captain Miller, you want it or? Miller's not even in here with us at this point. Oh, of course. Okay, yeah, well, yeah, Miller hasn't, hasn't seen then. this yet. So her, this, her uh, stress level hasn't gone up. But as you go um, over and pick that up, Davis, um, what you can see, you can picture you're going in the darkness. Uh, this thing is there, no head out whatsoever. And as you're looking down and going to grab it, at first you think it's something unusual about the suit, but you can see his arms are actually too long for the suit. And not a matter of like, that they're just, you know, they, they look a little weird or whatnot. Like they've torn the suit on both arms where it has stretched out. And that's what you grab this shotgun from. You can see the, there's the desiccated flesh underneath it. There are so, um, there are bulges in a zipper pocket in his compression suit. Oh my God, this guy's actually playing Gamma World. He's got telekinetic arms that got frozen out. <laughs> yeah. I guess I'll have a look in the pockets, whatever's bulging there, but gingerly. Uh, sure, so you gingerly with your suit on still kind of get in there. And what you find uh, are there extra shotgun shells enough for one reload. Okay. What that means is if you roll a, uh, if on one of your attacks you roll a, an alien, uh, you're out of ammo. Yep. yep. Okay. Gotcha. Um, then what also is in here? So what have you guys? Uh, like you would have seen this, and Wilson, you would have seen this. Miller is still in the junction room. What are you guys saying back to the captain as you're looking through this thing? I think I'm I mean, the calm. There's a there's a what? there's a dead man here, but I'm not sure. This <clears throat> weird. He's just. Not really a man. I think Wilson would have commented over the comms. Looks like a suicide. So looking on the walls, um, Wilson, uh, there are there's a case of uh, shotgun shells uh, that are on the floor in here as well. That would still be one more reload of, uh, for the shotgun. Um, okay, so two reloads. There is also a Wayland Storm Rifle which is the equivalent of the M41A pulse rifle, but it's heavy, it's a really big and bulky thing, so it'll count as two, um, two pieces of gear. Does anyone you wish see, to pick that up? You see uh, through the light, uh, Wilson, I mean, is there gravity in here or no gravity? Uh, I think there's gravity in here, yeah. Okay, I mean, like so the artificial we, gravity in, in, we, in that or like metal don't they have magnet boots or no not in this so i can't remember I, I don't think so i don't like i don't remember like nothing's rotating in alien and i don't see everyone seems to be walking on the on the ground in it so i think they like the, the set the game or the setting itself has like anti-gravity of some kind okay yeah so i guess right they'll just like kind of pick it up you can see the particles and the light from yeah. the lights coming through as you can see he's like really interested in in the gun but at the same time not sure what to do with it because he's already kind of weighted down with these yeah. other pieces of equipment yeah because this thing would be heavy um let me get the piece of gear here that's the one i want does yep. it look like it's uh is everything like a mess in here or is it pretty meticulously you like can stacked see. and stuff or? now that you're in here and you're looking back at the door wilson uh what you can see is that there is a here we go there's a spatter of dried white uh, milky white spray on the wall Otherwise, the room is clean. Milky white spray makes me think of android blood. That's a reasonable assumption, yeah. Glance back to see if Davis saw what uh, Wilson saw. Okay. <laughs> I think Wilson kind of ignored the arms too long as just like being freaked out. Mm-hmm. So Miller, if you make your way over, you'll see this as well. Like Davis has picked up a shotgun and there's that fucking headless corpse in there. So you can yeah. raise your, your stress level by one. Okay. 
Uh, Ryan Champ. Also, let's do this, guys. Everyone roll on their air. This is oh, oh is this our second one then? This is your oh, yeah, one, two. first one, yeah, because you because of your how fast you went, you haven't uh, made use of it yet. Why is that not rolling? Oh there it is. Oh are there any dice to add for air nope, or no? No modifiers straight up. If you mm. for every panic you got, you get a you lose an air. Yes. Yep. Oh okay. no, Wilson. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> He was super stressed. Okay, so Cham loses none. Uh, yeah, heavy. oh my God. So you're just <laughs> hyperventilating seeing this thing in here. Now it doesn't have any other negative effects on you. Okay, what is going on? Here's my pop-up submit. I'm just checking for Rye. Rye has gone down to four as well. All right. So, again, there is an atmosphere here, but uh, you just right. have yeah. yeah. So, next turn, what would you guys like to do? There still is a movement. Something is moving down in that living area. Yeah, there's that makes sense. There's a gun over there, Captain. Miller, there's uh, a big old gun over there. If you need it, because there's something unholy going on here. This is the, I'll put the stats it's hovering over there, so you can see. Plus one to hit, three damage, extreme range, and it can fire full auto. It's so big with what our visual capabilities are, it's we can't really tell what's going oh, on. Oh, okay. Hold on. Um, Let me do this here. I'm not sure how zoomed in you guys are, but if you're, is that better? Is that easier to read? Still only read a portion of it, but we can click on it actually, and then re and then be oh, able to okay, see perfect. it. So we're yeah. good. I mean, I would give I, if Davis is saying there's a gun, then I would say uh, we need to give it to Rye or Chan because they don't have weapons right now. Okay, the so three of us have weapons. Weapon for give it to Chan, anyway. maybe. Yeah, give it to Chan. Yeah, if it's a big gun, give it to the big man. Okay. Okay, I've got my card here. And I'll put it on Cham's sheet. Right. Uh, are you letting Cham or, or Rai come in here? Or are you No. Gonna... Not once the captain saw that horror. It's like... Okay. Okay. She's trying to protect them. In fact, she'll kind of stand in the doorway there. Like, because there's no... Re We're not passing through the armory, right? No. No, no, no. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah, so she'll kind of block the door and hand mm -hmm. the weapon to Cham and sort of like, you know not let them in there. Rai is Seems looking like... at you like, what's back there? Captain Miller, what's back there? What's moving? There's two rooms off of this oh. as well, though, right? Yep. Those, um, those historic... Which way is Rai indicating uh, the movement is? Though? The same area, living Steve... area to the south. Oh, yeah. So, like, let's head south. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, let me open those doors for you, Wilson. Are you going to open them up, I should say? Like, where is the white matter? The white matter is close to right here, up against the wall. Oh, okay, I see. Like as if something sprayed. It's not okay. the same as that brain matter that's all over where it right. blew that, that person's head off. Miller, you also see the weird distended arms of this thing I, that was that blew its own head off. Yeah. I mean, this is making me think, yeah, we should be ready for trouble. Okay. So, you have two Everybody, zones. Weapons oh. ready. Well, first, let me uh, tell you what you're seeing there. Those are... Escape pods. To the north uh, and the south, those should be escape pods. Uh, Wilson. Okay. If you want to, I can open them up so you can see. Um, let me, here we go. Look at this. They should use them. <laughs> so, that one is there. That one is there. That one is there. That is gone already. 
Someone used it. And that is gone. Someone used it. Oh, shit, where the hell would they even go? Oh, hold on. Those are actually... Wait, wait, wait. Those are different. Those are actually... Those are armory. Yeah, so the north is the... Uh, um, to the north is where the... What do you call it? So this is a vestibule in here, and then the armory, this is where you would have found that uh, shotgun shells and the pulse rifle, or that big oh, rifle. Okay. But well, this one sense. is empty, and this one is empty, and there are two. So if there was weaponry in here and in here, it is not here any longer. Someone has collected it at some point. And up okay. here, those are escape pods that are still there. So. Wilson is showing some uh, grit as he shakily kind of moves about the room, checking into the different uh, two escape pods here. Now, remember, you guys can take a rest and try and reduce your stress level. But yeah, hmm. um, <laughs> you would be rolling for air. Let's press I wanna... on, guys. Let's press on. Is there a way I can use my access key card here to drop a stress level? Uh, yes, you could uh, take a look at that thing. What is it about that? Do you think that that uh, makes him feel safe? Oh, okay, so I was thinking he was like, you'd open something and see something, but the key card is really what is uh, is just like a memento or something that makes him feel better. Yeah. Like maybe it was uh, an old key card to a C-suite that uh, he had never really achieved or that was his goal, always his goal. So he keeps that to, to make him feel better and focus himself, you know, sure. on the direction he's going. Yeah, reduce your stress level by one. Miller, do you have anything you wish to access for this um, act to try and reduce it? Yeah. Without spending time. Um, yeah, not right the second. I think that... Uh, she is very concerned about everyone though like and especially um seeing that gruesome scene like you know as i said she's like you know weapons at the ready everyone okay all right so if you guys step out into the hallway where do you want to go next south i'm just gonna lead the way Once you guys so are in the area. Yep. Okay. So I'll try the... So you... There, let me open the door for you. Should be not far so along. I'll One more... Peek in with my sh shotgun. Yeah. Okay, go ahead and move yourself in. All right. Um, let me see here. Che, get a rye up here with that motion sensor. <laughs> so as you're stepping out, yeah, nothing in here. It's just this is a, a junction leading from one to the other. Uh, if your blueprints are, are correct, that um, that you pulled up at the end of that corridor, there should be an intercom for speaking to everyone on the ship. Oh, to the uh, eastern end. I'll just use northwest, south, whatever, because it's just easier to to navigate. Obviously, there's not a north end of the ship in space. Right. I oh. thought it was funny when uh, James said west earlier on the map. <laughs> Where's a habit, I think, for all of us? Oh, yeah. So, where do you think? I certainly don't know the right term. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it'll be port starboard, you know, for yeah, right, but I don't know aft. I don't know what. No. I don't remember. Yeah. I should. <laughs> yeah. And GM worth his salt dungeon <laughs> user would have, you know, prepared that. As long as we all know what we're talking about, that's good enough, I think. I, I totally do. All right. Me. So Rye is coming in. Captain, it's still moving. <laughs> Kui, 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 kui. It's moved from the living area. Kui. It's into the corridor going to the science lab. 
Pui. Pui. Well, whatever it is, it's... It's active. Davis, what would you like to do? Uh, that's... I will. Come in. I put the incinerator on the ground and say, right, get this. And then I'll creep forward. Okay, so she'll grab that from you. And I'll keep going. Which way is would you like? A... There's... Okay. Is there a way? I'm just trying to look at the big map. Where's the big map? We just got to keep going down. So there are doors. Let me... Right mm. there and right there. There's a door over here. The water closet. There's doors into here. That is another we stairwell. We gotta go this yeah, way. I'm trying to head towards that science lab. So. By an indirect how route. How would I head down there? Okay. Can I open this door right here? Yeah. <laughs> well, let me open it. I'll open up both your corridors here. Just give me a sec, guys. Davis. Wilson. Now, would each of you give us Oops. a D6 roll, please? Tied. Well, that's settled. Ooh, okay. So, as air rise moving up with you, as soon as that door opens, Rye, Miller, Miller, it's disappeared. What do you mean it's disappeared? I mean, it's not appearing anymore. It's not moving. Look. And you see that poom, poom, poom. Mm. So Davis. Well, let's get to the science lab. As you open that up, um, you can begin moving your way down. There is, it looks like, another intercom partway down the hallway. There's also a door into the mess hall down there. If you're facing down on the on your left, right there, there's mm -hmm. a door leading into the mess hall. But there's something curious. There's something on the ground. Okay, so I Turn point the... my lights at that. Let me show you what's on the ground. It's almost like a... A cluster of like, I don't know, growths of some kind. Ooh. And it fills up about a one meter or a slightly larger uh, than one meter patch. There's different size things. They look almost like sickly gray blueberries with little pulses or holes in the top. And it looks like there is dust drifting around above them. Wilson glances at Miller. Like, do you want to set Cham up ahead here or do so, you want to join Davis? What yeah, Davis is walking down this hallway all on her own. And, and Davis, for a split second, you think of how you have opened up your mask in order to take those pills. Mm. There's a dust hanging above these things. You cut it right. It burned this shit. Which way did, did you, you go? go over, over to the right, over to the east and south. There's two parallel halls that lead like farther. this way. Yeah. Yeah, I'll follow. So Davis is is sort of staggering, maybe back a little bit from seeing these things. Um, are you having Cham and Rye hold up the rear? Or are you wanting to go? I was gonna. I think Wilson's motioning to Cham to uh, lead the way with that uh, with that gun. That big that, fuck that off big gun. gun. Okay. Yeah, and I think that yeah. Okay. So they but move I'm up. Had it. I was going to head south, but they go the other way. Okay. 
Oh, is that what you want? You want him a cham ahead of you? Yeah, to go south. Okay. Right, so we're like taking both. Who is Rai uh, going with? She has the motion sensor. Probably with me because. Because <laughs> um, you're in charge. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so Sham, he's got that that uh, that big heavy pulse rifle pulse up. Pulse rifle. And Davis, you've seen this. What's going through your mind, Davis, having seen this fucking weird fungus on the ground? Yeah, this is good. You burn this shit. This is just. <laughs> this is this is just got no th place on us. No uh, spaceship. Don't. Don't burn anything. We might need this for research material. So this is over palms, but Wilson's on the other side. She, yeah, I'm assuming that Davis said, was saying this on comms. I don't I'm, know that can, for yeah, sure. Yeah, you can all hear that. Yeah, that's why I was saying that. So, like, Wilson pauses and he's like... Always thinking of the first big bucks, huh? Well, Something just think of the... This has killed... This has probably killed everybody on this ship. Not on combs. <clears throat> I look at Davis and I say, burn anything that looks dangerous. Rai's the one who has the incinerator, incinerator. right now. Oh, you gave it to Rai, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think it, I think uh, Wilson will say in response, not to obviously to Miller, but it'll be like, uh, it was obviously a, a shotgun that killed the only person we found dead so far. Okay. And his arms? If you want to give us a command roll, Miller... This will give, remember, you can give the bonus to uh, Rai for her role with that uh, flamethrower. Right. Uh, can I use a manipulation to say, oh, but I didn't hear that part, so don't worry about it. Yeah, yep. I think his, uh, Miller said that uh, like oh, turned three off successes. Time. Yeah. Okay, so she steps forward. And let me make a roll for her. So why was there an auto success there? Wait, no, there was no auto successes? Oh, I thought that's what the white one is. Oh, the white one is just white dice. Yeah. Oh, oh okay. <clears throat> the yellow or the panic oh, dice. Oh, because you have four or... stress that now, right? Yeah. Right, right. Uh, I'm stressed. Okay. Yeah. Hence the burn anything that looks dangerous comment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here we go. That is two successes. So she steps forward <clears throat> and then completely burns this ship. Uh, then let's have everyone roll for their air. Air. <laughs> this game has a lot of sheets and pages and maps and a lot of things to click. Okay. Oh, I'm just not used to it. I think this would be very intuitive, like you were saying, Kevin. Yeah, definitely. <sighs> and just learning how all the little bits run, and then also like your talents and stuff like that. I'm getting low on my air. Oh, are you? Let's see here. Yeah, Cham's loot going down by one. Ooh, Davis is down by one. Rise, okay. Oh, excuse me. Cham's down to four right now. I love how the little like loading symbol thing goes over when you hover over the resources. Oh, you know what? Hold up. I need to, uh, Rai has been carrying the motion sensor for two rounds now. I need to make two power rolls for her. I think that's every, every turn I need to roll for that. Let's see. Oh, like it uses power, yeah. right? Yeah, because it starts with a power five. And like, you can gain other resources as well uh, over the course of the uh, thing. Uh, you guys don't have any food or water with you right now, but uh, I'm sure you'll be fine. Well, there's some food in the armory vestibule. In the armory vestibule? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, definitely want to eat that. <laughs> Okay, where is it here? It looks like Davis already cooked the uh, the veggies or <laughs> the the side. <laughs> okay, so it, uh, the power depends <laughs> on the gear you're using. So let me just check the motion sensor. Let's see here. 
Okay, tools. Uh, no. Nope. Medical supplies. Pharmaceuticals. Here we go, guys. Drugs, drugs, drugs. Motion tracker. Ooh, you need to make a power supply roll after every use. So I'm assuming oh. she's using it once per round. If you guys want to use it less frequently, let me know. Uh, but I'm just going to make the two... We're panicked. <laughs> I'll make the two power rolls for her right now. There we go. So this is one. I honestly think, like, we wouldn't even be thinking about the power on that thing. Uh, we'd just be thinking about finding this thing moving, right? Yeah, so the first thing's down by to four. I mean, if all of a sudden it's low, we might be like, you know. Yeah. Okay, and then there we go. Number two. That's okay. All right. So, is she going to keep it active for this round? So, you got a door to the hall, mess hall. We're into the next turn. You guys have been down here for 20 minutes so far. Mm. Mess hall, straight down towards the uh, science lab. It's still yeah. not moving. I mean, the science lab is where we lot, last saw it moving. So, let's go straight down past the mess hall and to the science lab. Okay. We're going to keep moving, too. Okay. Go ahead and move yourselves down, guys. So there's yeah, another Maybe door. that's like comes over the calm, the captain. Keep moving. Ooh, there's a corporate suite next to you. Wilson. Is the door open? Uh, I'm assuming Cham's in front of me. I yeah, can't Cham's control moving Cham. up. So you're passing that right now. Cham's going right down to the far end. Well, I think it's going to be hard for Wilson not to... Peek his head in the corporate, the C suite, yeah. Okay, so let me, mm. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. Okay. So you pop that up and let me tell you what's in there. <laughs> um, okay. So this room. Uh, the spacious area was at one point, at, sorry, was at one point luxurious. However, the bed that is in there is soaked with blood. The couch cushion stuffing is all torn out and the furniture in the room is utterly destroyed. I think Wilson maybe opened it and then, you know, kind of like had a, like a, a face that he would expecting all this opulence and everything and like that and then he's like almost horrified uh, by what he sees well you know and, what would be uh, in here too um oh. knowing the layout of these things this is where the wall safe would be there also mm -hmm. probably is another um ooh, what is it the eev which is the, um, uh, there's an escape pod in there okay. as well. I think maybe checking out the wall safe would be smart for me. Okay. So, <laughs> all right. So Cham is, is sort of, are you, are you wanting him to watch the door or are you? Uh... I think that I didn't even think about Cham at the time. I would just was like, oh, uh, I'm all right. This is the suite. I better check this out. And then okay. further thought. Uh, maybe whoever their liaison was, if there was one, would have put something in the safe that we would probably want yep. to know about. Love it. Okay, so you're making your way in there. Davis, and Miller, and Rye, you guys are down near the end there. Are you going to open the door into the living area? Let's do it. Yep, let's do that. Okay. So let me tell you what you find in there. Double check in here, guys. Okay. So, door goes open. You guys can move yourself down into the living area. 
I'll tell you what you find there in a moment. So looking around here, there is that busted, there's the bed. Um, there's a wet bar in here that looks like it was almost splintered in two. Uh, there may be some bottles that are still left there, Wilson. Um, the door is still shut to the closet that you would know is an escape vehicle, emergency escape vehicle. Um, and the wall safe has a Ooh, it's code activated. So without the code, you would need, it would need to be cracked, which would require a shift uh, of work. So it'll be uh, oh, like, yeah, it's quite some time to get the, the thing open. And then it says a minus three contact roll, or it needs to be blown open with a uh, explosive with a blast power of 12 or more. Yeah. Um, Remember, you can always spend a story point to get an automatic success on something. So, um, so you're looking at this and like, what the fuck would be 75 year old vessel like this, a suite like this? What the hell's in this safe? Like, is there a dresser or like a desk or something? Um, any furniture in here has been completely busted by something. There's a mm. more blood on the bed than something could live through. Yeah. And the bed's just destroyed. Yeah. All right. I think he's going to uh, hurry after Cham now. Okay. So that is one. Uh, okay. So Davis is into his second room right now. Uh, so you guys, Davis, Miller, and Rye, you guys can move yourself around in that living area if you like. We'll count this as the second uh, area. Okay, so there's a couple of interesting things in here. So directly ahead there, that is an access terminal, Davis. So I'm going to access the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the computer to mother, to access the ship's mother. Oh. And to your left and right, you can see that's where the different quarters would be for the uh, for the crew. And let me open the door for Cham down here. Cham makes his way in. Okay. So you guys, uh, probably like Miller and uh, Davis, you guys can move yourself in a little further. Wilson took some time to get in, so he would be getting into this area after you guys. What are you doing? Uh, well, straight down is the science lab as far as our map that we know, right? Yep. It's the last place we saw the movement. Let's check it. Okay. So, check that door. That's not the door. To access it uh, is around the other side. Now, the access terminal, let me see what you can do with that. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's like the back of it. Yeah, what you also see at the other end, it looks like uh, Wilson, Cham will move a little further forward. So there's a door directly in front of Cham right now. Oop, come on. There he is. There's a door directly in front of Cham. Ryan will move down in here as well. And then you can see off to the side there. Um, there is a med kit. See that little uh, yeah, first aid looking symbol? Yeah. Yeah, is that it's like in the wall or something? For yeah, it's in the, it'd be in the wall. Let's see. Okay, okay, okay. So 
So there isn't like a clear guide for what's in there. But let's see. Oh, here we go. Yeah, so there's a med kit here. You can, uh, what a med kit does. Okay. Is, let's see here. Personal med kit contains all you need to stop bleeding. Uh, med kit is not a permanent solution, more like a band-aid. It gives you a plus two modification to me medical aid rolls, but can only be used once. So it's kind of like a healing potion, to be honest. <laughs> so you get your auto doc. Just, do you want to grab that, Wilson, or do you want to champ to? Counts as one item. I'll grab it. Okay. So you can add a med kit, personal med kit to your thing. Davis and right. Oh, and then the um, terminal. Okay, so that's the bridge. There's the armory, crew quarters. say that thing that terminal might mean in the science lab itself it might not be indicative of the um sorry of the living area i'm sure there's nothing dangerous in there no i'm sure not so, what would you guys like to do? Uh, Davis, yeah, Miller, and Ryan, are you guys moving any further forward? or? Yeah, well, it's like we're turning, right? Then to get to the door to the... So you can see Cham and Wilson there. Uh, like, unless you guys pushed forward, if you waited for everything, Wilson would have had enough time to get there, take the med kit, and you guys wouldn't be none the wiser. Yeah. Okay. So, then, everyone's going to roll for air. Eat. Yes. Good so oh, change go. good. <clears throat> okay, Miller's good. Miller gave herself the soup with the really good air tank. Yeah. And Ryan, <laughs> I'm rolling for <laughs> both. we go it's waiting for it to show up now so right oh rise air goes down by another one right it's down to three air okay then cham is at the end of the, the access corridor or the hallway uh down here do you guys just want him to open it or Miller, Rye, and Davis, you guys are hanging way back from where everyone else is. If you do want to move further into the ship, you're going to have to move yourself forward. Okay, so what about this? So this computer, can we get in there Let me then? see if there's a door there. Hold on, maybe I'm missing a door. Nope, there isn't. There's a wall. So that where that computer terminal is, it's dead right now, and there is a wall there. Uh -huh. If you look at your... Um, Let's move across, I guess. And that, okay, so now I can see the rest of the guy. Okay. Right, we'll move up the rear. Oh, I see where the door. Okay, okay. Right, I thought that terminal was the door. No, I was, I was confused no, with the two, around. and I couldn't. Yeah, and I yeah, couldn't yeah. tell what it actually was. Um, so as you guys go up, Rye, uh, you're about to open the, um, or Cham is about to open the door for you. And Rye's like, Miller, Miller, <clears throat> somebody's moving in the mess hall. It's in the mess hall. You already went past. There's no way to get into the mess hall from the science lab. 
Nope. Mess hall, you would get in from the two doors that are in there. From right behind us, where we just kind of were. Yes. Yeah. yeah, we turn turn around. Let's okay. go back. I think I think uh, Wilson's going to look past Cham. And is there a way to lock this door in front of us? Uh, so yeah, you could. I mean, Cham could make a heavy machinery uh, check. It's like, are you trying to weld it shut, or are you trying to fuck up the lock? Uh, like, is there a way we could just like put something metal through there so it doesn't open, or something that we could not destroy it but I make think, it harder for? Yeah, I think you'd have to do some kind of welding or messing around with the machinery. Yeah, let's do that. I'm gonna tell Will. I'm gonna tell Cham to do that when they go as they go back. So I don't want something okay. coming up behind us. Let's sure. leave that portion of the ship locked off because this is a nice choke point. Okay. So Cham, you are the one. So Cham is gonna make a heavy machinery roll with plus two. Are you gonna help him, Wilson, at all? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we'll give him a plus three to this. Like maybe with observation or so. I don't know if I have to say what I'm using or. It could be directing or just in general. Or shining just... my light better or whatever. Precisely, yeah, yeah. So let's see here, how do you do? Ah, uh, panic. So oh, he's no. going away. Um, so I get a panic as well then, right? Oh, you do? Yeah, shit. So his, what's your, let's do yours first because that'll be, you're a player character. All right, I'm gonna roll my stress level. Yeah. So that is, so don't think that's, that's not rolling correctly because what you're supposed to do is roll 1d6. Let me take oh. a look at the character sheets. Maybe, the, is there a panic button on there? So I'm hitting the stress level button. Yeah, I and I don't it. think that's necessarily what we're rolling. I think it's gonna be, there is, at the top, there's a d6 you can roll. Oh, the roll menu, 1d3, 1d6, 2d6. Yeah, yeah. So it'd be 1d6 plus three. For you. Oh, I didn't have a place to put a plus. Oh, there's no modifier? No, just oh. straight up rolled it. So what is going on here? Hey guys, good news. There's room for radiation damage. So when you inevitably take radiation damage, we have a place to record it. Uh, let's see here. Here we go, stress and panic. I'll make sure I'm not uh, screwing this up. So if you, if you panic, Roll 1d6, add your current stress level, and then check on the table. Yeah, so I don't know why it's making you... I, I don't remember reading anything where you're rolling your stress level, but maybe I'm missing something. Um, in any event, uh, so you rolled... Let's not have you count that necessarily. What is your stress level currently? Three. Three. So give us a 1d6 roll. You can roll that generic d6. Oh, plus, just like slash roll 1d6 plus three. Oh, yeah, or, or oh. that. Or you can roll the one at the top and just add three to it. Whatever floats your boat. 1d6 plus three. Oh, no, nine, the same thing. Nine, drop item, whether by stress, confusion, mm -hmm. or the realization mm -hmm. that you're all gonna die anyway. You drop a weapon or an important item. Uh, the GM decides which one. Stress level so, increases by one. So the equipment that I have is, I have the service pistol, Yeah. the uh, harpoon, Grapple and the med kit that I just picked up. And the med kit. Um, let's have you drop the uh, uh, the harpoon gun. Yeah, yeah. Because I got, I feel like it's like clicked on something or something like that, yeah. and maybe that strap is loose. And yeah, yeah. You just kind of see it clatter out as we're like opening it, so we don't know that that happened. Yeah, and like when people come back through, I will give people a, an observation roll to try and uh, spot it. It's just that you've you've lost track of it now. Cham needs to make his. Cham is currently sitting at a stress level three. Uh, Davis, would you like to give us a 1d6 plus three roll, please? 1d6 plus three. Oh yeah, your, your stress level is up to four now, Wilson. Yep, I did it. Yeah, okay. Okay, right, 1d6. I'm four though, right? Uh, no, no, you're not for you, this is for Cham. For, her, for Chan. Okay, yeah, so sorry. 1d6 plus 3. He's only at a 3 right now. A Don't. 6. So 6 That's is, is nothing. So here's this clattering from behind you. Wilson, You're. what are we seeing from you right now? 
Um, what did we? Oh, because we were trying to do something. I think maybe Wilson feels like he heard something on the other side of the door. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he's like, uh, you can hear his like his breath coming heavy over top of the thing. Um, right, right. Check, check the motion sensor again. I heard something on the other side of the door. And he's like kind of shifting around and yeah. moving, and that's where the camera sees. You know, the the gun gets like dropped off somewhere. Maybe it's on that. You know, the hangar where you you pulled that uh, that med kit out of. Maybe yeah, it's, yeah. it's like the dispenser one. It gets caught on that, and it's just it's it hanging on that. Off. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I'm just rolling for Cham quickly here. He's at a three. I'm just gonna see if he happens to spot this with his observation and wits. Okay, three, there we go. Okay, so you knock that thing off. Um, he has, uh, so because he didn't panic, that means he's got uh, two extra successes. What would you like to do with those two extras? Do you want him to make it so he can easily get access here again? Yeah, I want it to be easy for us to open it, but not easily open from the other side if possible. So what I'll let you do is because, and if you want to spend the other one on getting it done fast too, I'll let you make one more, you'll be able to move one more zone this turn. Okay. Okay. It's either that or can we like maybe make it one step harder for someone to get out, get through here? To get out? Oh, like like set up in in a secret kind of, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think so we'll your do that turn, instead. Sure, so your turn is spent doing that, and maybe you're moving around and, and so focused on, like, micromanaging, you're going to be a yeah, great definitely. manager, definitely. And just, like, yeah. oh, 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 oh. Okay, so flashing all over the place. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Miller and Davis, you guys have two zones you can move. Yeah, okay. We're moving back to the uh, thing. Uh, that's, that's all. all. So okay. that's up. Uh, here, right? Yep. Okay. Oops. So that's one zone into there. And then are you just opening the door to the mess hall? Yeah. Okay. Open the door. All right. So let's see here. Oop, wrong level. Here we go. Now, what you see in there, food stores in here were ravaged. It looks like a pack of wild raccoons have been through here. Most of the explored food stores are rotten and covered in mold. Um, But perhaps more disturbing is that from what you can see in this light miller, as you're looking around in there, there's the rotten food and whatnot, but Every now and then what you're seeing is a folded, uh, the tin foil that wraps the food up, a folded origami animal of some kind. Mm. You look and like the light you can picture is catching uh, one or two of those. Now, give me one more second. I need to double check one thing here. And then, what? Here we go. Would you give us a an observation? check uh, Miller at minus two because of the dark. Okay. Uh, observation minus two. Ooh. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This is a contested roll. Uh, so. Oh. Uh, to be clear, when you push, you auto get another stress. Uh, you automatically get up one more stress, yeah. And then you get to um, reroll anything that's not a success. What do you think? Um, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let's that's do the spirit. It. 
Well, cause... So first you go to five and then you hit reroll or push. Sorry. Exactly. Yeah, and then push. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so you got two successes, but you also got to roll for panic now. What's your current... Uh... So well, it, only it, rolled, it only rolled four it, stress dice for you, though. And it didn't keep the success. Oh, yeah, I guess it did. The first one was a success. Yeah. So I think... Here, I'm going to roll... Something I, is... That's weird. That's weird. Okay. Uh, oh, you know what? I got new, good news for you. Your extra stress okay, dice. I, I just rolled for it on the side here. You've got a uh, an extra success. success. Oh, so, nice. Three successes. Okay. But, 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 you did roll a uh, panic. So your current stress level is a five. Give us yeah. a 1d6 uh, plus uh, 5 roll. Okay. Did 2 panic mean anything? Uh, I don't really. think so, but let me double okay. check. Well, you add 2 panic to your two stress you mean? score, right? To your stress. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, rolling oh, uh, so. rolling the aliens that don't add to your stress level. Oh, oh right. Just sorry. over. Yeah, sorry. Yep. yeah gotcha. and I think it's just uh, yeah, one or more you roll on the skill dice. This happens, then you roll for panic. An 8 tremble you start trembling uncontrollably all skill mm. rolls using a uh, using agility suffer minus two modification mm. until your panic stops perfect right before a gunfight and remember uh, panic yeah, exactly <laughs> stopping panic requires another person coming to your aid uh, making a command roll one turn passes or you are broken the thing is, is you actually rolled a fair amount of, of successes there. So let me just quickly roll for one other thing. Yeah, I observed the thing I wanted to. Occur. Well, that's exactly what I think is going to happen here. <laughs> but it's so like cool. not a I, good I, I, thing. I will, I will uh, reach out to her. I uh, see her trembling and then well, reach this is out to sort say... of all happening. I need to make one oh, roll okay. for one thing here first, and then I'll uh, you all have a chance. <laughs> Davis shit. doesn't see it and is just trying to comfort all of a sudden. Yeah, you're oh, fine. Sorry. Yeah, and you hear Hit that like, mic. that chattering, you know, like the the what do you call it, the drool soaked chattering teeth. <sighs> All right, let's see here. I need a bunch of dice. I need a bunch oh, of shit. dice. Here we go. All right. Let me make a quick roll here. That sounds promising, right? Uh huh. <laughs> now. Do you want to spend a story point? No, no, you got one issue. You got three successes. What you can see, Miller. Yeah. On the far side of the mess hall. Let me give you a handout. And I think this one will be easy to pick out from amongst all the others. You see a bright white dome that then moves up and you realize it is not a dome. Oh, it is aliens. I'm so surprised. <laughs> <laughs> this is right there. I don't know if you can see it actually. I mean, you know, I'll do, I'll do this just so you can see where it is. Cause can you see that now, Miller? The picture? Uh, another picture of the thing in the. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, oh, you can see it in there. Oh yeah, sorry. Yes, I can yeah, yeah, sort yeah. of see okay, that. So, yeah, yeah. So that's where it is. Um, then with that thing. Oh man, you know when that thing revealed. I think that's where we end our session. <laughs> so we can do a little bit of a debrief as well. So that oh, thing has been revealed. God. And now seeing an alien does trigger a panic roll as well. And Miller, you're the only one who's seen it. So you're, cur I think you're, yeah, your panic, your stress level is a six right now. So would you give us a 1d6 plus six? Mm. <laughs> Wait, me? You? Because mm -hmm. you, when oh. you see an alien, it also triggers a, a panic right? check. Oh, it also... Oh, so but it, it increases my thing to six. No, no, no. It, you're, you're, uh, when you, uh, when you uh, panicked last time, that raised your stress level up from five to six. 
Oh, and okay. now it's a six, but you're making a panic check at 1d6 plus six. Right. Uh, 1d6. I got it. Okay. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, okay. Nervous okay. twitch. So you, uh, Miller, your stress level goes up by one, but so does Davis's, and so does Rise. Uh, oh, what God. do you think it is? Are you just muttering to yourself? Like, no, 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 no. Yeah, I... <laughs> I mean, I've never seen anything like this, I'm assuming. So it's, yeah, it's just like, oh, God. Oh, God. Okay. And uh, let's see here. So, yeah, because uh, that is the tremble result you get. So then the next, oh, no, that was the um, nervous twitch. So the next thing that we would do, guys, is we would be drawing cards for initiative to jump into combat. Um, Miller is still panicking and suffering a minus two to her, uh, I should actually double check and make sure you can gain extra, while you're panicking, can you gain extra? Um, Is panic a button or anything on here? No, I don't see it. Oh, if you are suffering from a panic effect and are forced to make another panic roll, the new panic effect replaces the previous one. So you've that actually got sense. yourself fucking under control now. Oh, right. That's cool. pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, okay. But you so freaked yeah. everybody else out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So then, uh, guys, <laughs> we got to the end where we're revealing you guys, but lock someone in. We've revealed our first uh, xenomorph, neomorph thing. So, guys, that's our first session with um, aliens. What did you guys think? Or alien? I was. I was kind of I was kind of disappointed that an alien actually showed up. I thought it was something else. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it was super uh, heightened in, uh, tension throughout. I think the individual um, orders helps with that because you're never quite sure who to trust or not trust, as the case may be. Yeah. And uh, the music actually was a, a really big help too, because it, it was like just kind of this weird, tense, mm. engaging music to me. Uh, I had a blast though. That is yes, awesome. Why well, will say the uh, music is a selection of mine. <laughs> so thank <laughs> you for that. Uh, yeah, no, I really <laughs> liked it. I I like the. Um... I like the secret information or goals or however you want to do it. I actually think that that is a simple mechanic that could be incorporated into more games. It's kind of fun when characters sort of have a little bit of their own agenda because it um, it's as long as they're not so um, motivating that like the player would be constantly derailing the game to accomplish their little side quests like as long as the sort of side quests at least fit with moving the plot forward i like it mm. it's it's a cool mechanic to like like uh jason said like who do you trust or you know why are they doing the things they're doing i like that i like the little questions between the players where it's not 100 percent guaranteed that their goals are the same as yours when each of the um, think, well, even like, and God, Leah's uh, taking her pills, you know, zipping the thing open, and, and even that, like, that when I read that one, I'm like, well, I'm not sure how much this is going to come in, but like, that was fucking great <laughs> to have that and then discover those uh, spores uh, shortly thereafter. That was great timing. Yeah. We didn't even totally. get to, we're getting close to the end of Act One, but we didn't even get to the end of Act One, guys. Whole fucking ship to still explore. Um, let's talk about the um, uh, the dice mechanics. Uh, the um, how did you feel that the dice mechanics? F past experience with um, this for me, for me has only been Vason, a single session of Vason. And the thing I wasn't crazy about with that was that it made the I, I felt that the players it was so swingy. The players didn't really feel like they they were as good at what they were supposed to be good at. Competency issues. Exactly yeah. the same thing I felt playing Vason. Yeah, but that, I don't know, like in this, that didn't feel, that didn't seem to be the case here. You guys felt like you were succeeding at the things you were trying. I don't really Yeah, and I think it's more acceptable to be failing under stress in a horror yeah. scenario like this. Yeah, you know, you're jittery. Too, right? Yeah, but this is more 
Well, okay. But I Very find trophy, it's more yeah. creepy. But uh, And everybody here knows you're in deep doo-doo. Whereas in Vazen, maybe you're uh, investigating. Uh, it can go wrong, but you're investigating. Here, it's just scary. Yeah. From the get-go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this game kind of suits the that mechanic of, like, um, growing tension, right? You know, more than maybe some other settings do. Mm-hmm. Almost everything seems to push towards that. Like your air tests, your thing, it's always like bringing up, picking up this tension level. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah so yeah. one of the things that they, um, you know, like all our uh, horror RPGs have that, have sort of collectively got the same bit of advice for, you know, uh, for, um, uh, for DMs by this point, uh, or a lot do at least, where and one of the things is is isolation, and one of the things is limited resources. Um, and the game, because of the way the turns work in it, and the reliance on the map, really is interesting the way it, it isolated you guys, right? Because like with with um, yeah, to give you a sense, you could I think you move one zone uh, as a as a as like a slow action as if you're running in uh, in combat. So like it would t- it might take one or two rounds for Cham and uh, Wilson to get there, and because of the darkness as well, you can't fire through another zone till you get those lights on or you get another source of light or something like that. You're just you're limited in in there's that that separation and isolation. Um, and the ticking clock with the resources also does a really fucking fun job of giving a giving a, 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 a ticking clock to the game without it just being this arbitrary countdown. Mm-hmm. Right? Like that, that's some. Um, did, did it feel like you're playing in an alien film? Like, say, apart from the aliens or whatnot, did the tension feel real or, uh, or the way it does in, in those films? Uh, absolutely. They did for me, for sure. Yeah, I think so. Like I was saying, like everything seems to push towards that. So there's actual mechanisms for it. Like you said, it's not just a ticking clock where you count to 10 in an old school game and then do something if they haven't done it. Yeah. That doesn't really maybe do anything, but this definitely does. Cause you're like, oh shit, now I got to make this air, air roll or whatever. Is there anything in the mechanics <clears throat> for like a stress uh, like a major stress release like let's say like if you kill the alien or anything like or you know like you kill one of the xenomorphs like uh, i'm just asking i just don't know all the rules yeah i, I can't remember I, uh, there, there has been um you know like uh for example you know just as an example well, yeah every, like every turn you spend in a downtime place uh, in a safe place you reduce your stress by one uh, right. So, oh, okay. So, like, you could like retreat to the ship and yeah. like calm yourself down, well, kind of thing. Yeah. I don't think you guys have it, but there's a fucking great <laughs> one uh, that um, Marines can take called Combat Banter, and basically, like, you, you sort of bullshit with friends, and then when you did do, do a uh, downtime, like you take a turn, you reduce your stress by two instead of by one. And that's a talent. That's a talent. Yeah. That uh, that uh, the, the space marines can get, although the colonial marines. But the thing is with that is that when you fire in full auto, your stress level automatically goes up by one. So there's a reason they would be having their you know their stuff going up. Um, oh yeah, and Davis. So uh, let's see here. Yeah, personal safety. I'm just trying to see if there's anything. You guys had some interesting. Um, your your talents didn't quite come up here, in it, but um, uh, but yeah, yeah. Like, I I was gonna. I I would only. I mean, I mine was kind of like command people, right? And it's yeah. It seems pretty good. Again, using it with NPCs, but I don't know. I guess I'm just the kind of player who doesn't like to use that kind of thing against other player characters. Yeah, and that's I that's, understand that it's kind of designed to do that. Yeah, but... and that's that's why actually, to be honest, why I I knew that you that's how you, like you really like playing as a team player for stuff, and so I wanted to push a little bit to re- emphasize like you guys fucking your characters hate each other, and that's part of the fun of this. Like that tension and antagonism between the working class captain and the corporate guy. Um, like that, that's part of the fun of the, of the play. Cause mm. you're, you have a little bit more, like there is, it's, it sounds like you guys had, uh, you know, there was as much investment as, as far as horror is concerned in this game as there would be in any other one, which is fucking great. Um, but also there's a, there's gotta be a level of detachment from the characters because if they die, right, you pick up somebody else and then you're right, in, of course, into the shoes yeah. of that character. 
or uh, yeah or you know that you have a backup so you can ride it like it's wet right you can ride it to the yeah. end like you're on a ride it like a torpedo don't don't take it easy because Heck you have yeah. that backup and that's really kind of gives you more free reign to play it harder yep a hundred percent and that's uh, and i guess if you were playing a campaign you could just be kind of constantly introducing new npcs right like yeah you find you find someone who's still in the stasis pod in this thing right or like a couple people like just to keep the numbers up right yep. without spoiling yeah. the, the campaign boy that would be a good way of suddenly introducing a whole bunch of new pcs to, uh, to potentially right. no of course i yeah yep. i'm not trying to spoil it i'm just like I like no, no, that. But I mean, that's like, how you could play a longer game for sure. And that's what each of the adventures has those sort of like, there are release valves for where new things come in. And it's yeah. very clever. And then you also, just like your characters, you they come in, here's the agenda. And uh, like the, we were playing with the digital cards, but like the um, the agendas uh, are on cards as well too in, this, in the starter set. So you can hand those out and each act you get new agendas. And there's also mm. secrets and stuff like that. Like certain characters have secrets. Uh, they also come on those cards. So you'd be sitting with them there. I absolutely fucking love the gear cards. That is so cool. Seeing you guys actually like trade them over and put them back and forth. Like just that little bit of tactile. And then having you drop one too. Like what a neat result. No kidding. I should have taken, that's what I should do. I can take it right off here. Yeah, just drop it like and I'll add it back to the deck. I feel like that's one way um, this game really did remind me of the movies is like sort of like gear is so important. Like, you know, that scanner, the weapons, like even though we didn't even fire one, every weapon felt so important. Like we yeah. were kind of jostling over them and like, and you know, that's sort of like what you expect in this kind of mm -hmm. setting and game. And it's a fun bit of gameplay that like video games do it pretty well because uh, you know gear management is a thing in most video you know video game RPGs, um, but card or card card games, uh, role playing games. I think there's often a real attachment with the gear, and the gear kind of defines your characters. So you're less inclined to be mixing and matching stuff, and you're less inclined. Like old school games will have stuff that have limited charges or scrolls or things like that that get introduced and then get used and are gone. But if not a lot of art, like a lot of RPGs are more geared towards you getting shit and keeping it and becoming a signature part of your character. It's cool having stuff of like, okay, here's your list of stuff. How do you want to make use of this stuff? And then figuring out who's grabbing what, and then, you know, if something happens to the person who's got something, like what, what happens there? Mm -hmm. Right? Like who, if you lose the torch, you know, if you lose the motion tracker or whatever, uh, it really, I think, um, yeah, it makes for a, a really interesting, uh, other bit of decision making that you're making that you're you're doing in the gameplay that you don't see in in a lot of other games. Yeah. At least for that limited, yeah. So, um, any closing thoughts on Alien? Uh, it's not specifically Alien, but it was really good to play. Like, I don't even actually know if I ever played with James before, but obviously I've played a ton with Jeff, and it was a uh, yeah, it was great being kind of rivals. Uh, with, with <laughs> sure. Jeff. So it's good, good to see you again, and thanks for letting me play, Kevin. No, of course. So great to have you back, too, Hobbs. Uh, James, Jeff, any last uh, thoughts on Alien? No, uh, no it's good. It's a good time. Yeah, and I think my last thoughts with it is. Um, if you had, I think if you had some friends who were really into, you know, horror or alien movies or just sci fi and you wanted a little six hour evening hangout game, this would be a really fun in person game, even with some people who maybe aren't that into role playing games because it's kind of got some uh, board game ish elements that might help ease people into sort of the role playing. Definitely. Uh, version of well, and the, the tactile gameplay. stuff you get, it, like the, the starter set, is a great fucking value because you get this adventure, you get a hundred and something page rule book, a hundred and four page rule book, and then the more recent source books or adventures, uh, Destroyer of Worlds, and I can't remember what the, the final one is called. I've got it, but I, I don't remember what it's called. Um, they specifically have everything you need if you just have the uh, starter set. Starter set also has 
uh, all the cards and whatnot for characters and such uh, that are in the um, that were originally in here in a separate uh, card pack that you could get for the game. It also has nice little handout sheets. Uh, for each of the oh, characters, yeah. which is nicer than the cards that were originally in this sucker. And two sets of fucking dice that I had to buy separately originally. The stress dice are in the, there, yeah. All in the starter and, set. And yeah, the it's, price it's a, of the starter set isn't much more than the price of the two dice. Oh man, yeah, really? Yeah, awesome. it's, it's a. It, I think it's like 40 euros for the, for the dice and 45 euros for the starter set. Yeah, what, it's like what you, dumb. Yeah, you just go buy a second starter set. <laughs> yeah, I think the one thing I can't remember. Oh, uh, I can't remember if character creation yeah, rules are in here though. I would also add, um, like to go along with what I was saying there is the game only uses d sixes, which is like I think that really helps for like new players to like grok the idea of, yeah. um how the roles work and you know so you start adding them d20s and d12s and it confuses people even though you know it's it's not that complicated but no. i have friends i have quite a few friends who we play with and doesn't matter if, how many times they've done it they're always asking me what dice do i roll here or, you know like it's just oh, whereas yeah. this is so simple like it's just you look at your character and you add up how many d6s you're rolling and roll them that and is one thing i'll say too. ones and sixes are all that matter kind of thing so, so it's kind of cool playing in person we, we weren't playing with it because we were using dynamic lighting which gives you a different effect but with the um, if you're playing with the, what do you call it, the in-person, you've got that massive fold-out map that has this, this ship on it, and then you have tokens, seeing that have the little motion tracker things, mm -hmm. and they got markers on it, and then on the other side, some of them are humans, some of them are xenomorphs, some of them are other things, so you can just place them down on the map, and the players will be like, what the fuck is that ping there? So it's not me describing it the way I did here, you're physically right. seeing it on the map. Right. Do you want to go check that ping out? Exactly. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Having it disappear, like, wait, where'd it, where'd it go? Right. Yeah, it's, cool. it's I think it's a yeah, really board well game. done. That board game point's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. True. yeah. Awesome. Well, I can tell you, I, just from a, from a mother's perspective, um, I, I felt like I was still grappling, like really trying to grapple what the, um, you know, with the, with the actual mechanics of the game up until our break. Um, as soon as we got past the sort of like uh, scripted back-to-back -back kind of sessions, uh, and I don't know why it was, but it, it's very, very fucking easy to read. I read this through the adventure twice, so I, like I had an idea what was supposed to be there, but I loved reading the like the set piece or the like sandboxing part with the set encounters in each location, very easy to look up and very easy to read. And then also very easy to keep track of and introduce the events. Cause that's what I was doing. We were doing a mixture of you guys exploring, but also me introducing events as we were going along. And depending on how fast you want to get through the material, you know, you could just blow through all those, um, you know, and, and skip some events which aren't mandatory because some are mandatory, some are not. Um, very easy game to once we got going and started seeing some of the the consequences of uh like panic rolls or air going down or whatnot um it really felt like the game was really starting to take a life of its own which was really really fun cool all right yeah then for those listening at home, thank you so much for joining us for our first foray into uh, the world. And thank you to uh, Wayland Yutani for uh, sponsoring tonight's session as well. Uh, Building better worlds, Wayland Yutani. Um, we will be back, let's see here. This is normally our, our Rogue Trader night. We should be back in the Coronas Expanse in two weeks time. But until then, uh, uh, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns regarding the session, the, uh, the game we're playing, or this adventure that we didn't answer thus far, please don't hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section down below, and I'll endeavor to reply in a timely fashion. Uh, there is also a link down below to the Dungeon Musings Discord server, where all of us are active, and we have channels there dedicated to this game. Uh, what do we don't? We don't have a channel dedicated to assorted games. I should set one up for, uh, let's we'll see if we, uh, how much uh, year mutant, what is it, year, year zero? That's the engine, year zero engine? Yeah. How much of this year zero stuff we actually run? Um, but um, yeah, we've got an assorted games channel as well as channels for most other games we run on the channel. Uh, there are a ton of other things like finding a group or GM advice or 
you know, there's a great community that has grown up over there and you are more than welcome to join us. Uh, there's also a link down below to uh, our friends at Noble Knight Games. Noble Knight Games are the preeminent unionized retailer of hard to find and out of print RPGs in North America. Not only do they have an outstanding selection of new role playing games, board games and card games, they have an unmatched selection of hard to find and out of print RPGs, including the Alien Starter Set that I played tonight. I bought mine because I couldn't get it. I wanted it faster and uh, and with cheaper shipping than from uh, Free League. Uh, so I got mine from uh, Noble Knight. Uh, if you make a purchase of $10 or more, oh, they, and uh, I should say Noble Knight also has a terrific want list feature. So if they don't have in stock something you're looking for, you can put it on a want list. And then when it comes in, they will send you an email and you can go pick it up. Um, if you purchase $10 or more through their website, be sure to enter the code SPRINGMUSER, all caps, all one word, and you will save yourself 10% on your purchase. If you're listening to this after July 1st, 2023, come back to one of our more recent videos and find what the current discount code is because it changes about every four months. Um, there is also a link down below to something called Heroes Save Villages. That is the charity fundraising campaign we run on the channel. It benefits the SOS Children's Villages International Charity, a really amazing organization active in over 130 countries, benefiting over 80,000 orphaned and abandoned children, including ongoing relief efforts in Ukraine and the surrounding countries at the time of recording. All money donated through that link goes directly to SOS Children's Villages International. None of it goes to the channel or any other middleman, just goes to help out the kids who benefit from their services. And as a small way of saying thank you, if you've donated $10 or more, well, if you donated $10 or more since January 1st, I would hold off because we, our last charity session for the first half of the year is gonna to be tomorrow. Um, so you might wanna hold off donating until June because then you will be able to vote on the second half of our year-long uh, Year of Ill Omens campaign. We're running six different interconnected sessions, each set in a different time, each using a different set of characters, each having a different set of rules thus far. And um, yeah, uh, tomorrow we'll be uh, traveling to 19th century China to continue on with our campaign that began in the golden age of piracy and continued in the first century of the Roman Republic. Um, if you donated $10 or more since June 1st, uh, 2023, then uh, you will be able to vote on the next three sessions uh, in our charity campaign. Uh, that'll lead us all the way up to the end of the year for end of 2023. So uh, lots of great things to vote on, including what game we'll play, what characters we'll play, when it'll be set, lots of great stuff. If you donated $25 or more, then uh, you get one chance to win for every $25 donated. You also get a chance to vote uh, and you know, win one of the grand prizes or one of the other great prizes in our next charity raffle. Grand prizes, oh, actually I don't know what the grand prize is gonna be yet, but prizes include chance to play with us, uh, two copies of the D-Genesis Rebirth Edition slipcase uh, RPG, so the terrific uh, out-of-print um, post-apocalyptic RPG published by Six More Vodka. Uh, we have a gorgeous uh, chainmail dice bag uh, crafted by our resident armorsmith, uh, Dave, that he's donated once again for this charity. Um, and there's some other great stuff as well that I need to... I can't remember what it is offhand, but lots of great stuff to win. Um, so you get a chance to uh, win some cool gaming stuff, a potential chance to play with us, a uh, chance to vote on the second half of the year's uh, charity sessions, and most importantly, a chance to help out some kids who could really use some help. So winning all around. And speaking of winners all around, a huge thank you to our stalwart employees of Wayland yutani So Jeffrey, James, and Hobbs, it was uh, so great to play this with you tonight. I tell you, like, there's, it's rare that a game, um, wow, exceeds expectations uh, going in when I'm coming in with fairly high expectations, but I had a shit ton of fun with this. So thank you so much for playing tonight, guys, and thanks for being such great players. Uh, and for those listening at home, thank you again for joining us for our expedition into this dark world of uh, Wayland Yutani's future. And until we see you again, we hope that we gave you a few hours to take your mind off of the troubles of our world and think about the troubles that our stalwart employees, the space truckers, have run into on their uh, trip out to Sutter's world. And until we see you again, stay safe, stay healthy, and happy gaming. Bye. Bye. <laughs>